Shane Winter. Hey, welcome to the Cougarland Podcast, and I have the uh, stealthy, inevitably very hard to find, Ratcliffe brothers. Um, I've I worked with John uh, Paul. Um, used to play a lot of ball. Very well known for his basketball. John was known for his golf game. Uh, you know, and here we are. And I haven't seen you guys in face to face or on here for I don't know thirty two or thirty four years. I think it was at least. Yeah, it's been a while. It's I know we've uh, crossed paths. I crossed paths with several uh, Vicenza alumni uh, in the last, you know, 20, 30 years since high school, but not not recently. But, uh, you know, uh, Claudia, uh, I think she goes by Claudia 11 now. Yeah. Claudia lived yeah. in Tucson. So we got together with her, with, with my sister Keiko, who now lives in Phoenix. We got together with Claudia a couple times. And that was what about the her, about her the husband, Chris? Mike. Chris Summers. Chris Summers. We saw Chris yeah. Summers and Kathy Summers not too long ago, uh, just before the pandemic. So, yeah, we saw them that run. How about you, Paul? Have you run into anybody? Um, not, not a lot of folks. I mean, you remember Alyssa Van Thillo? She, yeah. she lives here in Louisville, so I ran into her. And uh, there's been a couple I've, you know, here and there. Tree came through uh, Louisville one time. So, right. so I got to see him. Um, and then, you know, years ago, uh, Chintzia. Okay. Uh, she, she married John Roach, and um, her husband and I worked for the same company here at the time, Harris. So I was down in Melbourne and um, saw her for a little bit. And, and uh, so, um, who was it? Um, oh, uh, Ralph the Cabolis, I, I talked to um, uh, over the phone once, I think, but uh, not, not, not a lot, you know, unfortunately. Ralph Schuberg lives near you. He was there. He was my grade. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So he lives in the yeah, same town. I can't town. say I ran into him, so. You guys live close. Yeah. You guys are probably yeah. passing each other at the Bigly Wiggly or whatever yeah. kind of sport they have <laughs> like, out there. You, you're going you're gonna to throw out all these names. <laughs> you're going to throw all these names. And, you know, I got to tell you, I didn't, I didn't prep like John did. I didn't look at any yearbooks or anything. I thought, thought I'd just come in and just wing it, you know. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're noticing the difference. I'm freestyle myself. Oh, look at this. Oh, my God. Look at that. This man has all the collections. I dug them all out, man, because, you know, my memory is getting worse by the year. So I, I kind of perused through them uh, in the last uh, – earlier this morning. <laughs> this is, that's what this is. This is for your memory, though. This is like a memory exercise. For me, I, I felt my memory slipping around 50. And I'm like, ooh. Oh, yeah. So I started podcasting, get my brain working, because I realized I was just sitting there like, uh, YouTube. Uh, you know, I wasn't – there was no output. <laughs> it was all input, and it was just – you know, like a blender of blah, but yeah. here I am. Um, now it's you guys funny you say 50, right? All of us are like 50 and older now. It's like crazy. Well, know? think it's, think about though, we are older now than when our parents were when we were in the gym. It's true. Yeah. And that's crazy. Man. And we, we outlived disco, which was great. I mean, that's the good part. Right. Yeah, yeah we lived through that. Time. Yeah, we survived. We survived disco music, man. We're here. <laughs> You know, now, now I understand all the drinking in the backyard, you know, so that all makes sense. <laughs> or, or even worse, you call your friends and you ask them, how's the weather? And you realize yeah. you become yeah. that guy. How's the weather? Yeah. That's right. Oh, How you doing? <laughs> yeah. Start complaining about aches and pains. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. With all this Corona stuff, I've become a day drinker. So, you know. <laughs> uh, that's pretty solid though man for me i have the lately the worst side effect is like i think i need a nap and i never needed naps before because i was out doing something. Ah, no kidding man right like this that's weird, the greatest weird sleep cycle so are you guys both working remote pretty much or yeah yeah I yeah uh remote, yeah so. Yeah, Arizona's been pretty tough here lately so we've uh been teleworking most of uh since about april uh and then, uh, you know, the numbers started going up, so we remained on telework. So I'm still on telework, which is not, I, I like it. It's not bad. Uh, the commute's great. You know, I just roll out of bed and take a shower and roll right in here and uh, start working. I end up yeah. working a lot more, which is, uh, you know. Feel like you're getting taken getting advantage of? Done. You're like, he's doing so uh, much. Keep him at yeah, home. I don't get the, yeah, I don't get the drive-bys, right? People come by and drive by and shoot shit, you know, just kind of shoot the breeze and, Wow. Man, you, I you don't get a lot of that. 
<laughs> yeah. I like the flex schedule. But, That's good. But I'm I'm in uh, I'm in Louisville, so I, I've been re working remote since about March. So it's crazy. Yeah. It's it's a change, you know. I mean, I think the whole world's going to stick with it. Only people that have had trouble are people that have little kids and their kids aren't in school and high school, you know, high school kids, and they're like trying to write some code for some whatever dashboard and here come ah, jamming in there, you know. Okay, okay, okay. Put honey, stay in the living room with the kids, please. Let me have the the garage. I got to work. Whatever it is, you know, um, that's one thing I read about was people were complaining. But the people that, you know, their kids are grown up or they're single, they're pretty happy because they're like, this is amazing. They might miss the water cooler talk. Mm -hmm. But if you think about it, you guys ever see that movie Office Space mm -hmm. where the guy's coming around to the yeah. cubicles? You get the TR-21 file. That guy, <laughs> I mean, that guy's job is gone because nobody <laughs> needs that guy anymore. You know I'm the guy I'm in the about? basement. I'm the guy in the basement working his ass off, not knowing he's not getting paid. And they move you up and they take your stapler and you feel devalued. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Well, it was, it was nice. You guys went to visit my dad before he passed. And I thought that was really great of you guys. I saw the pictures. And yeah. how was that trip? You get to see him and see Cape Cod. Was that your first time out there? At the Cape yeah, Cod? It was my, yeah. Um, yeah, it was, it was nice. Um, good to see him, but, you know, kind of sad to see him in that situation you know, but, um, but yeah, it was, it was nice. We got to, I remember, uh, yeah, I remember Ted, saw Ted up there. Ted made the trip. I don't know, John, if you made the trip or not, but, uh, no, I didn't get there. to make that trip. Yeah. Yeah. I, saw no, I didn't get to make that one. I think you and Ted did because there was some, yeah. a couple of pictures you guys shared with us, uh, yeah. where you gave him a Jersey or something. Yeah. yeah. But I saw yeah. your dad, uh, I saw your dad when I went back to uh, Vicenza after graduating from college. And uh, so I got, I got, you know, I got, I got a job there in Vicenza. And uh, so, you know, I was there for another four or five more years and uh, was playing a lot of softball. And your dad was always watching our games. You know how he is. He's always coaching yep. too, man. So in between games, he's telling us, hey, man, you need to do this, you do that. And I'm like, okay, good. <laughs> he's like, he's scouting out the other team, you know. So we're playing them, you know, in these tournaments. Uh, we're playing softball. I played a lot of softball when I was there uh, going back. Uh, when I returned with working and uh, he would go to every game man, and uh, coach kind of coaching it from the bleachers, you know? So that was fun. That was <laughs> he, really he, fun. I mean, he, he was, was addicted. He was addicted. Well, he was, he a, was. He was a baseball player. Yeah. So he, yeah, he, yeah. That, that was really, if we had a baseball team, then you really would have seen what he could do. But yeah. you know, there was no baseball in Vicenza. You had the Pee Wee league, the AYA or the DYA. Right. And then uh, for you guys, it was mostly basketball as I recall. Right. Well, we played, uh, yeah, mostly basketball, but we also played because uh, we didn't have a real baseball team in high school. Right. I think we had it one year, but uh, folded. Uh, and then uh, but most of the time we played softball in high school. So we played a lot of softball in the summertime. Uh, who was on that team? Well, I think Vern and Sam, so of course, it's the couch. Sam, yeah, his last name. Anyway, Shikowski? they were the coaches. It sounds like yeah. A yeah, and uh, uh, let's see, you and I, Paul, you and I played. I played short. Paul, you played, what, second, right? I think yeah. we had Luke, Luke Craig on first, Frank Rosario at third. We had who, who uh, I think James, uh, James uh, Greenwell. James yeah. I think James Greenwell was our pitcher. Yeah. And then we had, uh, in the outfield, we had uh, Teddy, uh, John Rosario, uh, Brock Blomberg, remember Brock? Oh yeah, Brock. And then we had, uh, yeah, and I think it was uh, Marcos, wasn't he? Was, was he the other guy? Yeah, we had four outfielders for the short field. Yeah, that was a blast. So we played that during the summertime. Uh, and I can remember one particular incident because we played against the GIs in rec league, right? Played against these GI teams, like a couple level teams. And so, uh, you know, we were pretty good. I mean, we were, we had a pretty good offense. Uh, hit the bat, you know, and, and pretty tight defense. And that, that, that bodes well for us. And, uh, you know, so we're playing these GIs who are a little bit older than we were. And, uh, you know, they, so they would they would make fun of us. And I remember this one tournament we were playing, this catcher, one of the GI catchers or something, making fun of fun of all of us, you know, going, hey, you babies, go back to high school, you know. <laughs> and he was saying shit like, uh, hey, your mom was calling you, you know, and all this sort of stuff, right? So I remember this one time, Ted got up the bat, he slapped one in there, and the guy's, yeah, your mom was calling you. 
Ted's running down the baseline, right down the first baseline. I think it was Ted running down the baseline, you know, and he turns around and looks at the catcher and says, yeah, your mama's calling me too. <laughs> 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 Sitting there going down. He gets on first base. And then Frank, I think Frank Rosario was up next. And uh, the, the catcher was really mouthy uh, and uh, was giving, you know, giving Frank some shit. And Frank's a big guy, right? He, I mean, he wasn't yeah. giving crap from anybody. If you get in his face, he, he wasn't going to take any crap. But uh, he was, you know, one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. He'll give you, uh, you know, his right arm if you wanted it. Uh, so he was, uh, so this catcher was razzing him. So he gets up to the plate, turns, pivots to him, turns to him, gets right in his grill, and then says, you know what? You got a big mouth. Grabs the face mask and pops oh, it. Oh, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bitch yeah. cleared me out. That was, oh, that was hilarious. That was hilarious. That's Frank. <laughs> Right. Frank oh, yeah. doesn't take crap. I mean, you challenge him, Frank's going to get right back in your face. Uh, and that was funny. That was hilarious. But that stuff like that happened all the time in softball. We play. Uh, so that was, that was fun. That was where, fun. Were you guys, where did you guys come from before Vicenza? Where did you move from to get there? We were in, uh, we lived Germany. in Germany for what, two, three years? Yeah, Bamberg. In Bamberg. And then prior to that, we were in Virginia. But most of our lives, we were overseas. Yeah. Uh, let's, see, uh, we, let's see. We arrived in Vicenza in 80, the winter, January of 80. Oh, wow. Right? Yeah. January of 1980. We worked there very long. I mean, and then my, my folks, my parents moved in 85 after Paul graduated, right? They moved up to Frankfurt. And so Keiko didn't get to graduate in Vicenza, unfortunately. She had to graduate, and uh, they moved up to Frankfurt. So they, she graduated in Frankfurt in '87. Yeah, but uh, so we were there between '80 and '85. I graduated in '84 and went off to college, and then came back for a year, and then uh, and then uh, we moved. Uh, but uh, so we weren't there very long. Well, what was but, it like? You know, what was it like to come back? I mean, after being gone and come back as a grown up with a job and have responsibility and you know a little yeah I came right? back it, yeah I came back after I graduated from college in 89 uh went to school up in New England your dad probably knew, knew it very well Northeast University uh yeah. it's in right in Boston and uh so I used to go to, I used to live near BU uh so you know where he went I think he went to BU you know, yeah he went to BU yeah and uh, so I was, it's just on the other side of the fence where my school was from, from BU. Uh, but anyway, uh, it was different getting back because uh, you, 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 you know, you're in a different part of your life. You have responsibilities after, you know, you got to make a living. You got to do something, you know. So it was a little different. You had to have your own, same... your, your own apartment. You weren't going to mom and yeah. dad's house and just eating their groceries. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah, <laughs> that makes a difference too. Right, I had a benefit, you know, and you get to eat and not have to pay for it. And yeah, of course. Made. But, uh, you know, this, all the teachers were still there. So that was kind of cool. So we met up with them. Your dad was still there. So, you know, you remember with your dad. And uh, especially on the sports field. Uh, it, it was a little different, you know, because I had to work. And, uh, didn't do a lot of traveling. But I should have taken advantage of it. Uh, but... Uh, I ended up playing a. I have to tell you, I ended up playing a lot of basketball and softball. <laughs> you so I met what, my you, wife there. You met your wife there. Was, what was she doing there? Yeah, she was. Uh, All right, well, I want to hear this one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I want to hear this one. <laughs> no, she. You know how it is, man. When you fall oh yeah, off, that's. I mean, you seem. I want to hear it. Come on, your soulmate. That's it. So. Oh yeah. yeah. All right. Let, let me, let, so, let me, let me get on. That's tell how you. it happened. So, but no, her, she was, uh, she was a senior great. in high school. <laughs> ah, here we go. Well, yeah. don't, don't you feel bad? My wife's 20 years younger than me, so it's okay, buddy. I'm going to let you off. Yeah. You know, it happens, but, yeah. uh, yeah, we, we said, each, you know, we saw each other. We're like, Oh wow. It's uh, so instant connection. Uh, been married ever since we've been married. Uh, well, we married two years after that. So we've been married, uh, what, 28 years? Wow. Yeah. So it works. It nice. works. Even oh, doing yeah. it the other more traditional way doesn't work. Let me tell you, I've done that a few times. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, I know. 
So did, well, did, you know, did Paul go back and try to find a wife thereafter after he saw your leadership skills in finding a wife? or? Uh, no, he no. took a different path. No? Go ahead, man. No. It's your turn, yeah. Paul. Where'd you find your wife, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> nice leader. Did you meet her Huh? He's, like, he's like, I met her at a roller disco in uh, Wisconsin. <laughs> That's pretty close, man. Am I close? Uh, no, I had, uh, you know, I had, I had a couple wives. <laughs> you too? Right on. Me too, man. High five. Well, yeah. It's no, I, I, had, I, was... <laughs> I like you. I like you, number one guy. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, so I've got, uh, I mean, you know, currently, you know, uh, my wife and I, we live here in Louisville. We have uh, two kids, uh, nine and 11. And then from previous marriage, have a uh, older kid, a little bit older kids. Uh, what's going to be, what is he now? 17 and 15. So, wow. So yeah, they live nearby, so uh, able to see them quite often. So trying to start your own team—that's good, man. Yeah. yeah. Or a farmer. You're a farmer. I need a, a lot, big, a lot of kids. We're gonna have a farm together. That's another technique. <laughs> today, I mean, people don't have families that size anymore. You know, like today, it's like I need one. Okay, let me look at the budget. One. You yeah, know, I mean, it, it, it's not like the. And it, we had people in Italy that would have five brothers and sisters, and my dad's family had seven brothers and sisters. And you guys were three, you two and, and your and your sister. So, you know, that was kind of the normal thing to have a family sized family back in the day. You know? Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. a it's a trip. But I mean, did yeah, you guys it's so tough to, I mean, everything's around the kids, right? So Right. You know, I set my calendar around all the activities, you know. It's gonna So yeah, we're we're one of those, we're ready for them to go back to school. So <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, so I unbeknownst addressed you as that new work from home client. I had no idea. Yeah. Now yeah. I, I get it. Um, it's, it's a trip, you know, to see you guys and go like, where did you go? Like people are like, yeah, where did I go? And that's how you're on the podcast trying to remember, you know, trying to lure you back in. Did you ever go back to Vicenza afterwards, Paul? Um, I think, I, I think I went once or twice. Um, yeah, but but not 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 not. Yeah, remember that time we went uh, when we were uh, mother and dad went up to uh, Frankfurt, and we went down yeah. one Christmas. Uh, we took the van, took uh, Sue Cuddy and I think the, her brother. And we drove down to Vicenza. Remember that one Christmas, uh, and we ended up playing in uh, a basketball tournament that Coach D wanted an alumni team to play in. He yeah. must have made one on the spot. He's like, ah, alumni, yeah. go. It was so, probably like you know, that. Kohut was, yeah, so Kohut was there, so he kind of organized it. So we said, yeah, we'll come down. And uh, so we came down. That was fun. That was uh, that was a blast. That was one of my favorite uh, times uh, playing basketball because I get to play. We got to play with Steve Jerome, who was all of Europe uh, back in 1980. Never played with him in high school, so he mm -hmm. was just. You know, when in 1980, I was I think in eighth grade, and he was uh, he was a senior, and then uh, uh, his brother Paul Jerome, and of course Johnny Kohut, they were in the same class together. And who else did we Who else did we have an alumni team? We came in and uh, Coach D wanted us to field an alumni team, so we did. And we just swept everyone. I think that's uh, we played your brother's <laughs> team. Sounds like you your got brother's it. team. Yeah, Sean. So you know, you know, you got like. Uh, Steve Jerome, that was great, uh, you know, former All Europe. Yeah, Paul, who was great, former All Europe, you know. And I and I played point, and so I had on the right, I had Steve Jerome. On the left, I had Paul. It's like I just got to pass the ball, and I get yeah. a, a, an automatic assist because they're putting the ball up and hitting. So that's all they did the whole tournament. So we did a lot of drinking beer in between games. Uh, in between uh, it, later on that night, get up. We're all sore and get up and do it all over again. And play another couple games and then have a couple beers at, at night and party and then get up the next morning and play another couple games. That was fun. Yeah. That was really fun. I, I got to play with Steve Jerome. That was that was a blast. That's pretty cool. That was, that that was pretty, Yeah, it was. It was pretty cool because hey. I, we I, we kind of we kind of idolized you know the former teams, right? Like they were Steve taller Jerome when and, you were. When you were little, they seemed so oh, much yeah. taller and bigger. And oh yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, they were like they an were eighth like, grader. Yeah, they wow. Were like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I went to watch a game with, uh, I don't know, when we first got there. And uh, I remember, yeah. So Chris Cavoli was up there. I don't know who Chris Cavoli was, but he, you know, they had uh, the, the varsity games. And then right after the varsity games, they had the wrestling matches, right? So Chris Cavoli was in his, you know, wrestling outfit. He was just going crazy, just yelling at the other team. You know, Chris was just, he was out there. Chris was uh, quite, a, quite a guy. Uh, and uh, he was just yelling at the other team. And I was sitting next to him going, who is this crazy guy? You know, and uh, <laughs> that was my first introduction at Vicenza. And then, but the, the, when the varsity team came out, they put the, the SEB, right, put out the lights on the corner of the thing and they televised the game. I was like, man, they're televising this high school game. So uh, that was pretty impressive. So I, I've always idolized Steve Grom. Of course, when we played together, it was like, uh, yeah, this is, this is fun. It's, it's, really it's fun. funny, you get to do some big time stuff like me playing football. We get to fly Alitalia to go play Siganella. So you're like yeah. a pro team. You're flying an airplane. I mean, a lot yeah. of uh, American yeah. high schools, they didn't maybe took a short bus trip. They never did the big timer stuff, you know? And uh, yeah. it, it's a trip. Now, you guys were in Bellagio. Do you guys spend a lot of time hanging out with Teddy and Greenwell? Were there, those a couple of your buddies? Uh, they were in my class, 84. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm, I was more of a shy guy, kind of. Uh, humble. I didn't. I didn't hang around with anybody in particular. Uh, did my own thing. Most of my social events were more with sports, right? So basketball, uh, cross country track, softball. So uh, that was most of my socialization. We didn't go to. I didn't go. I didn't go to parties. I don't know about Paul, but that oh, wasn't Paul? my thing. Yeah, oh. Paul probably went to a couple of parties. Can't you tell? Look at him. Look at yeah. He looks oh, like yeah. he likes the party. <laughs> <Not> high school. <laughs> he likes the party. party yeah. ever yeah. since, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's just been partying like a wild man. No, it's like yeah. well, you were. Yeah, kinda, we were pretty. We were pretty straight. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. For the most part. And, and then, uh, but some of your buddies you used to hang out with Freddie Parkins, and uh, Hackett, and a few of those guys. Mm -hmm. Paul, yeah. right? Those were some of your your yeah. buddies. Maybe Charlie yeah, Chaz, uh, Flint. Yeah, Flint. They, they all lived in Bellagio. So yeah. Cuddy, Cuddy was in yeah. your group too, probably, yeah. right? Yeah. And then uh, just all the ladies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That was old sales technique. First one to speak loses. Okay, I win. But uh, no, it's like. You remember probably playing a game, walking the back way through Stanga, through Villaggio, through the back road there, going home. Oh, yeah. right? You guys live in Villaggio. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. When we missed the bus, we'd have to walk. So we yeah. go, we go there. And uh, when we lived in Villaggio, because you know our dad was uh, a civilian, but we were the only civilians that lived in Villaggio uh, by token of him being the uh, the fire marshal. So he, he, he's authorized home base housing. So we were able to get on home base housing in Villaggio. And uh, so Paul and I used to uh, deliver the Stars and Stripes in Bellagio. So we, uh, you know, that was our, that was our, every day, every day we'd have to deliver the paper, you know? So we'd be up, I don't know, I'd be up earlier than Paul was because I had, you know, the other side of Bellagio. He had, he had the officer side, I had the kind of the enlisted side. And uh, I had a lot more, you know, I got a uh, hundred fifty customers or something like that. But we get up, I'd get up like four thirty in the morning, every morning, to deliver paper. Wow. We'd run our route. We would run our routes. That's how we stayed in shape. We we would run our routes, and uh, so we get, you know, it took me about an hour and a half to two hours to deliver the paper running the route. Get your road. Uh, get it's, your not road. One of, it's not one of those deals. It's not one of those deals that you know you roll the paper up and you throw it and you get it, you know. On the, on the porch, right? No, we had to deliver the paper. You know, in Bellagio, they had that screen door and they had some grills on the screen door. Between the glass and, the, and those grills, we had to slip the paper in. You had to, you so actually you had to hand off the had baton. To get, you had to hand yeah. off the baton, right? Here, yeah, yeah. So make we contact. Would, we, yeah. we would run and we'd get it, you know, we'd, we'd uh, we learn how to do it pretty quickly, right? Run, boom, click it, and just put it right in there and go to the next one. Jump down, run, and and so we would run our routes. Uh, yeah, so that was, that was uh, you know, if we get up 4.30 before school, deliver the papers. Uh, Sunday, we would start, you know, so 
Sundays, we'd have the, when do we get the paper? Saturday night or Saturday night, we'd get the paper. We had to put the papers together and then deliver them on, on Sunday morning. So we, we didn't have a break. Uh, you know, so, I mean, we made a little bit of money. But, oh, that's, uh, I think that's where you guys bought your Adidas top tens with. Come on, your no, Paul sneakers. bought a lot of those. Paul ben bought those, see? Paul had the Benetone. coolest sneakers. Oh, he Paul bought had those. all that Benetone crap, man. He was right? a Benetone guy. Yeah. Well, and Ste Ste Stephanos, is it Stephanos? Stephanos Steph and uh, Stephanello. Right? Stephanel. Stephanel. Yeah. Yeah. And Benetone. That's what Paul had. Well, you guys were basketball players, so it was about sneakers. I had Dr. J's. Those were yeah. the premium shoe to have. But then there, then Adidas comes out with the top 10 with the little holes yeah, in the front. I, Remember those? They were blue yeah, and we red. we never had those. I thought you yeah, did. Yeah, Paul and I never – no, Paul and I never had the top 10. Ted did. Oh. Uh, what did we have? We had um, – Theodora? Theodora. We had Theodora and we had uh, uh, Adidas. Remember? And ponies. That's yeah. Ponies. But, no, we had – <laughs> Remember, we went, uh, we went to uh, Lotto, Lotto. My, my, our trip, uh, no, uh, our, our family went to visit our relatives in Okinawa, right? And so in Taiwan, we had to make a stop there. Um, and uh, we saw some shoes. Remember that, Paul? We saw yeah. some shoes in there. And so we said, like, wow, we got to have those. It was, it, they were a pair of Adidas. They weren't top tens. They were a pair of and the top tens were Adidas. They were top tens with uh, red, white, uh, red, white, and blue stripes. We're like, we've never seen that before. We're like, okay, we need to get them. So our parents allowed us to go back to Vicenza on our own. So we flew back from Okinawa and again, stayed a night in Taiwan because we were going to go buy them shoes. So we bought those shoes. You wouldn't get those shoes cool on. Well, yeah, your, par yeah. your parents, so, yeah, your parents, right. shoes were it. your parents weren't worried. So. They're like, oh yeah, Paul and John, oh, so all they're going to do is deliver papers. Don't worry about it. Give them the keys to <laughs> no, <that>. we, <laughs> no, we got back. We got back uh, for a tournament. I think we were trying to get back early for a tournament. So we came back, what, about a week before our parents did? And uh, I think I was a sophomore. You were a freshman, right, Paul? Something like that. Yeah. I, I'd almost venture to say you guys probably spent more time with my dad than me. I really think so. <laughs> I really yeah. like. We we'll probably because, did. You guys probably did. Coach. Right? Yeah, he was our coach for basketball. He was our coach for track. Yeah, it's not oh, a lot of practice every day. Practice, you know. You guys were like a celebrity in my house. My dad's like, "Oh, the Ratcliffe boys." Yeah, I'm like, "Yeah, okay. Paul, Paul, <laughs> yeah. Paul, Paul, Paul was his man crush." Yeah, you know that right? He yeah. loved Paul. He loved Paul, and he loved Teddy. Oh yeah, I he I know Paul, a lot. Paul was Paul was killing it. I mean, Don't he just there. you guys were a couple of. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah teddy now teddy spittle was it intimidating because he had all the ladies yeah ted ted was, was a it? ted was a good athlete you know he was slow you know <laughs> 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 yeah, no nah, he was remember, all right uh, the one thing i remember by ted hopefully we'll shame him enough to come on here and do a pod, podcast with you but i almost yeah. called you lenny len it's all good either way uh, he was he was just infatuated with the size of calves, right? Remember those ridiculous shoes he used to be bought with the, like a huge platform on the toe, and he used to like just keep you on your toes, and he used to run around with them all day. Those ones with the disc on the front of the shoe, or yeah, talking about those, yeah, yeah. those ones yeah. that are supposed to yeah. jack up your calves, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Nothing yeah, worse. Than, how about those ankle weights that would make? Yeah, that got ankle... him to that got him to jump about five inches. That's, that's yeah. probably about as high as he was able to get up in the air. Man. <laughs> well, people thought that, you know, there was some coach that um, I ran into Mark and Dickey later. He was a general son. And yeah. uh, he was a, just a tall, maybe 5'11", maybe six foot white guy. Didn't look, seem to be extremely athletic, but he was like a gazelle. And he could grab, I remember after football practice, he jumped up and slam dunked a, a friggin' volleyball. I'm like, huh? How can you do that? He's like, oh, our teacher our coach would have us hop up and down on one leg for like 15 minutes each, like really crank up the, you know, the yeah. muscles to be able to jump. But everybody was looking for that solution. Like Teddy, maybe with his magic duck shoes or, you know, wearing platform sneakers. I have no idea, you know, but it's something, <laughs> something of that nature. Now you guys, what were, what grade were you in when you got there, Paul? Uh, seventh. Seventh? John was in eighth. Yeah. Yeah, when we got there, we played basketball, right? So I was in eighth grade, Paul's in seventh, and we played in the YA League. 
And so there was a, you know, the eighth graders played on the regular 10 foot rim. Paul ended up playing on the, with the seventh graders with the eight foot rims. I remember <laughs> those, those metal ones that they would roll out. Those metal ones roll out, yeah. and put up there, those eight foot rims. He was pissed. Paul was pissed. Yeah, as soon as I dumped it, you know, they had, they moved me up, I think. <laughs> <laughs> like too much. No, I, no, I was, I was pretty tall. I hit my growth spurt, I think, already. You know, I never grew since, but. Um, I remember playing and, you know, first, first game, you know, hadn't practiced with the team. Of course, um, you know, they, they couldn't put me in right away because, but I was like the tallest kid. I was like a foot taller than everyone else. So the last two minutes they stuck me in. So I had, you know. So. Come on and close out the show. Now, who was on your yeah. team? Did you play basketball with, uh, Tree and Glenn Jones by any chance? Were they on your yeah, team at any I time? Tree, yeah. Yeah. He and his brother, yeah. 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 Who else was on your team? I remember because I got that picture from my dad. Glenn oh, Jones yeah. was pretty good. I played with him when I was playing young with it before I quit playing all together. Yeah, but... Dino was on our team. Yeah. So, yeah. You're talking about the 84 team or the 85 team? Probably the 85 yeah, team. I think they, they, they were both on that. They were both on those. Yeah. yeah. The, the biggest... yeah I think they were both on because. Yeah. They yeah, they were on both teams. So the biggest difference between the two teams so the '84 team lost a game. Yeah. No, you, you were missing Ted. You were missing the best players, me and Ted. Yeah, I mean, come on, Ted, double, you know, Alley. Oh man, and Javier. See, those oh, yeah. guys didn't start. So Tree, you know, all those I got, they didn't start me on the '84 team. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I remember Javier. Now, you see, you're bringing Javier, it back. Yeah, well, Javier could jump out of the gym, man. He was, he was something. Were you there for some of those times? Were you guys there for some of those times? Because this is very basketball centric. But did you ever see the all army team come play a demo game at our high school? Yeah, I, I remember yeah. a couple of times. And they were like amazing. They were better than, you know, I'd never seen a pro team. And this was the closest you were going to get. They were the best basketball players in the whole army. And they had them play an Italian pro team in our yeah. gym. And they were slamming it on that rim that nobody could ever slam. And that rim's like, what? What's going on? It's all shaky because it never had been graced by hardcore, you know, super high-level basketball players. And those Italian guys were just confused, like they were playing the Harlem Globetrotters or something. It was, it was bizarre. Um, I remember my dad decided to let one of his teams play a woman pro, uh, Italian pro team. Nope. Did we lose Paul? We lost Paul because he ran out of batteries. No, actually, he oh. probably hit a button. Yeah, no, it was it was actually his team. It, okay. it was Paul's '85 team that played the women's. The '84 team. He, he just deleted himself out of here. Oh, he's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's now he's embarrassed. Right. He had to play against women. Oh, and they lost. Oh, was that? Were lost. you there? Were you there for that? No, I heard I heard about it though. Yeah, I that, heard about it. I thought my dad was mean for doing that. Like, no, you... those women were those women. They were yeah, like six foot American, three, but... six foot four. Yeah, they were they WNBA. Were they, they were, were W. I mean, they were you know former Olympians. Yeah. So they weren't. I mean, they're not shabby, you know. And and you know, you, this guy though, you kind of you know kind of well, do I really need to give him an elbow? And so uh, you know, they, he may have been a little bit hesitant at first, but I think they got their ass beat pretty bad. <laughs> I was there. I was like. I was horrified watching it. It was at the Palace really? Sport. It was at the Palace Sport, uh, that Italian yeah. basketball place. And uh, yeah. poor Paul, we didn't mean to shame you off the podcast when those six foot four ladies slam dunk uh, on you. I'm sorry. But, <laughs> but we were, uh, I would say the 84 team was better than the 85 team. But, you know, <laughs> but we were, you but, you know, so you're right. Uh, but uh, we, we sucked in 83. I mean, we, were, we were 0 and 14 in 83. We were 0 and 14, and uh, we we were we were we weren't very tall, we weren't very fast, and we got we got 0 and 14, and that was the year I think uh, Derek Gould and, and Mike Crenshaw in the middle of the season got kicked off the team, and we're like, holy crap, now what? You know, like we ain't got a chance. Well, so we, we were they out, drinking? We were they, were they drinking on beer on a trip or something? Crenshaw? No, and, no, no. What? Uh, so I don't know. I, I heard. I saw Derek, uh, Derek Gould's po podcast. The way I remembered it was, they were sitting. At, we were on a on a way trip, and uh, we were at, a, at some pizzeria or something. And uh, they were sitting at a table, and they had a wine bottle on their table. 
I don't think they were drinking. I didn't see them drinking it. I just saw a wine bottle on their table. And that's when I think, uh, you know, the coaches saw that and said, well, technically you can't take that. So they, they, they kind of kicked them off the team and we're like, oh man, we don't have a, we don't have a chance to win one game this year. We're going to, you know, so we went on 14 that 83 year. Remember that, Paul? That was, yeah. and we had fun. We had Frank Rosario on that team. So it was fun. Ted was yeah. on it. You, we, you had a pickup uh, league. You never knew. Like, I think 85, yeah. they had the, the first team with like the tallest team I'd ever seen assembled. Yeah. With Bree and his brother and, you know, you know, Paul. Uh, that team like there, I remember that team. No, no insult, John, but they were really, really amazing. <laughs> uh, they, they weren't they weren't all that but we had tree we had tree on our team tree uh jeff and his brother uh what's his brother's name his brother's name anyway he had two other brothers uh and then we had glenn was on that team but and then we had andre davis right yeah and then we had uh mike coley yeah uh javier uh we had uh you did review that right. yearbook, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, right here. He's got, he's got a, he's got a, 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 a Excel display. This is a new game. Know. It's a drinking game called Memory. Like, damn. Yeah. <laughs> right. I'm gonna win this game, <laughs> no doubt. But no, I remember eighty. So we would, we would, uh, we went zero and fourteen that year. So that summer, if you remember, Paul, that summer we on our own, not not with Coach D. But we on our own, remember we scheduled a couple of games with some Italian teams. And we would take the uh, we'd take the train and we'd go and play during the summertime. We'd go and play these Italian teams. And you guys uh, loved it. oh yeah, no, we had fun. And we got actually we got we got better because we uh, we we kind of played together a lot more together, you know, right? Ted, Mike Coley, myself, and Paul, you know, the, we and then we had Lou Craig, remember Lou Craig? Lou Craig played with us when we traveled to these to play these Italian teams, and then uh, I think we got better by playing on there. And then, then the '84 team, we went 12 and 0 and, until we got to the championship game where they, I think, stole the game from us. Uh, the referees did. Uh, it, it, you know, it was a double elimination, so we, we ended up winning the whole thing. But it was still. Uh, I, let me tell you this one story. This is pretty funny. So Ted, right? So Ted's on the team. Uh, so this is the '84 team. So I, had, so I ran the point. I had Ted on my right. I had Paul on my left, or vice versa. Either way. And Mike Coley in the center. And then we had Javier, who was the trash man, right? So he'd run the baseline back and forth, picking up garbage points. And, uh, and we had a constant motion, uh, like offense. I mean, we were just cutting and moving. And that was the great thing about your dad. Your dad, when we went 0-14, he, he went back to the basics with us, with us in practice. He would no lay. He what it called no layup rule. So the entire game, or no, it was a layup rule. So in the entire game, we the only shot we could take were layups. Yeah. And, uh, so he yeah, taught today us. They call uh, that the five out, right? We call five it out, yeah. They call it five yeah, out. Five yeah. out. And we ran that, and uh, but he taught us that that concept, and we didn't have to run set plays, and that was so great about what your father taught us is that he taught us concepts and, and how to do that. So we'd get on the court, we'd just run. And just, it was constant motion, constant going around. Well, anyway, so, you know, so we're passing, and, and there's a lot of passing the ball around. And, and so uh, Ted comes to me and he's complaining, right? Ted comes to me and he says, hey man, give me the ball more so I can, you know, I don't, I don't want to score some points. Why don't you pass me the ball? I said, Ted, I've been passing you the ball. You just pass it back to me. And then I pass it. Paul, and that's like a black hole, man. It's going up. It ain't coming back out. It's going. It's going. That ball's going to be a shot. Okay, so don't they have threes back, back then. The ball, <laughs> shoot it. Right. They had the three, didn't they? I think they no. had the three-point shot. Uh, it would have been great. Right? Well, that's Paul was the uh, early Steph Curry of so, Vicenza. Yep. Yeah. No. And, and so it was like a black hole. You pass the ball to Paul. It ain't, he ain't gonna pass it back out. He's taking the shot. And so that's what I told Ted. I said, Ted, man. Uh, Take shot. You got to take shot. That was so funny, man. So he, just shoot from half court. That's all you're going to anyway, do. If you so, get any closer, the ball's gone, buddy. No, that's how it works. Yeah. Yeah. Paul usually played uh, defense at about half court and then stopped. And then he waited for us to, to steal the ball. And then Paul's running down the court. So you have to toss it to the lead man. 
down the court. And that was, oh, Paul's there. Okay, got to pass on the wall. He's wide open. Pass on the wall. He's up for layup. That's how he got his 30 point plus points a game. Uh, that was, uh, that was, that, <laughs> no for, respect. For, for, no, for me, for me, that was Glenn Jones. That used to be that guy. He did that same job that you did. I just throw the ball in the air. Yeah, and Jones he was, would just uh, fly out of the sky and just pull it out like an interception and then take it to the basket. Was what I right. remember Glenn Jones was he was uh, he had a lot of natural uh, ability. Yeah. Uh, and when when he played on the '84 team, it was a, he he grew really fast. Yeah, he had a growth spurt. He, time. Yeah, he had a growth spurt, and he was like six four. Uh, on the 84 team, but he was a little bit, uh, uh, he was trying to find his coordination because he grew so fast, but he had a lot of natural, he could jump too. Yeah. He was, and uh, that was, yeah. So that was fun. I think that was one of my dad's favorite years. You guys had guys that could fly. We, we went from like the old, uh, you know, 1950s basketball model to guys that can fly, you know, and he was yeah. excited to see that people were taking flight. He had a good three point game, which was not three points back then, but, it worked, right? A little Paul's favorite stuff to do. I remember that. Did you guys do any? Did you guys do any skiing, or were you Boy Scouts there, or anything like that? Paul skied. Uh, I didn't do a whole lot of skiing. A bit. I mean, not. Yeah, just here and there. Paul and Keiko were the skiers in the family. My parents. I, I didn't. I skied, but I didn't ski that as well as they did. But, uh, no skiing for you. Just we would go. Our, no, our family would go every uh, Chris, most Christmases while we were there uh, uh, to, uh, what is it, uh, Araba? Araba, yeah. That's way was it Araba? There. It was Araba, yeah. Big resort. And we, we do a week, a, a week of skiing uh, up there and, uh, you know, take classes and stuff, stuff like that and just have fun. That's always so, a good, you know, that was act, a great place. It, yeah, so Lori Adams and Sam Adams and Sonia Adams, they were there. They, they usually go. Uh, they were the skiers. They were the big skiers, yeah. yeah. They were really good. Yeah. Uh, but at night, we would go and party at the discos. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't seem like all you do. Yeah. I'm like, no, they didn't party. Here I'm going, really? Did you? No. <laughs> we were, we were kind of discreet. Yeah? Closet partiers? We were pretty... Yeah, we were pretty straight and discreet at times. We'd have a beer, but you know, we did overdo it. You probably you probably didn't you know, divide didn't. your time up like me, which was eighty twenty rule. <laughs> I was on the eighty no, percent no. of the party and twenty percent of whatever. <laughs> you guys were probably like, you know, the opposite, probably five percent indiscretion back to business. That's what I that's right. what I see the right. Right. brothers. But it's all good. I mean, you guys get to do what you love. Well, I mean, I'll say that about my dad too. You guys love ball, he loved ball, it doesn't matter. As long as you're playing and as long as you're on the court or you're coaching it or you're part of it and you love it, there's nothing, there's yeah. nothing, you know, richer a man can be or anybody if they love what they do. I mean, that's the, okay. but I, I look at that. I mean, I left there, got into business, you know, had some really banner years and all that stuff. And I look at that, I go, well, he did what he wanted to do. You know, for me, am I selling real estate? I get a golden jacket. Was that my fantasy growing up? I don't care about that. <laughs> You know, just sell real estate because it pays huge commissions. That's the only reason. So you can go screw off and figure out who you are with the rest of your time. Um, well, but, you know, yeah. the, there's a lot of freedom in that, you know? There is. Um, you know, when we were growing up uh, in high school, we were, you know, we played sports. We did this. We did that. We were kind of, I mean, our, our schedule was just planned out the whole day. I mean, we, we were doing something. And so there wasn't a whole lot of time to do other things. Uh, so we were pretty busy. That's probably the allure why a lot of women thought the Ratcliffe boys were attractive. Because you guys were very unavailable because you were too busy running on the court. So you had the scarcity thing going on. Like, Ooh, who's that really uh, basketball player? He's gone. He's going to go do newspapers. Oh, he's doing push-ups. He ain't got time for you right I now. Don't know who that, no, I don't know who he, I don't know who you're talking about. Uh, I, I would hear I whisperings. I don't know. Right? Yeah, Paul, I, Paul probably, you know. Yeah, yeah, Paul. He's very quiet right now. No. Uh, well, yeah. I, I was more quiet. Paul was more the out there. Uh, you know, I, I was more reserved. You've switched roles now that you're a public speaker, and you know now that, that Paul <laughs> well, works for a library. Uh, I just don't give. It. I'm at an age yeah. now, or I just don't. Okay, fine, whatever. Yeah, exactly. You know, different things are but, important now, right? So yeah. yeah. 
but I, I still got a hold of, I still got a hold of clearance though. So, you know, yeah, you gotta be careful. That's right. Can't talk about what you do. Here's the thing. Um, and a lot of people can like, I want to get the Cavoli's on here. I want to get uh, general Cavoli. I'd like to get Del Rosso on here. She, I think she's willing, Diane, you know, they're generals now, you know, call them up. Yeah. And they're like, well, okay. Yeah. Okay. I got this thing. This can't get back to my who's, troops. I know. I Cavoli. Who's the other one you mentioned? Um, that's Diane Del Rosso. She's a, oh, okay. she's a brigadier yeah. general too. And oh, then, yeah, yeah. And then there's also, um, Xavier Brunson, Xavier Brunson, who I went to Boy Scouts with. Yeah. Yep. And, um, Lynette Gonzalez is an admiral. Oh, I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah. 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 yeah I, have to I get some... that back. It's Yvette. My bad. Yvette. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. What happened to us, man? Yeah, y'all are just a bunch of guys that work at Foodland. Bunch of, bunch of guys that sell popsicles at Foodland. What happened? I know. We stay at home working all day, I guess. Well, no, but I mean, hey, I, she's watching these podcasts over there. I think uh, Cavoli's tuning into these too. And, you know, uh, they're like, yeah. Ah. That's a, when you get a job that high tension and that much responsibility yeah. and people are expecting things from you and you're at the top of it, you know, it's kind of like, Hey, uh, shit, I just want some normal stuff. Maybe I'll listen to a Cougar Land podcast. And remember before I get all this stress and all this job and all these medals and all these responsibilities, let me take me back down memory lane. I think that's what the podcast does for people like that. Yeah. Because well, Chris, I, I, was a, Chris was a pretty neat guy. Even in high school, you could tell he was, he was going to go, he was going to do some things. And his brothers too. I mean, you know, Jim, fairly, very successful. Uh, Steve, uh, you know, all of, all the Cabolis, uh are just doing very well. Uh, you know, Chris, uh, he was, he was uh, more of the uh, outgoing type of the three, I think. Well, Steve was. Steve was out there. I mean, he, he was uh, pretty wild. And, and, uh, but Chris was, uh, you know, you could tell he was going to go. He was going to do some things. He knew what he was uh, going to do. Smart. Somebody said he oh, told yeah. them. They told him, um, he's like, I'm going to go off and chase my military career. He knew. Yeah. But, but ironically, yeah. and I'm not talking out of turn, but I asked uh, Diane, I go, did you know? And she's like, no, I just knew I was going to make a dent in the world. And I'm just going to go. And she did. So I, you know, I was like, did everybody already know what they were going to do? Because I left Vicenza like, I don't know if I'm going to work at a kite factory. I'm going to maybe sell macrame or sweaters or I don't know, man. <laughs> maybe. Uh, maybe. Uh, but, you know, if you did, uh, yeah. Lenny, I know that if you did that, you'd be, you'd, you'd be the best, uh, the best at it. Of course. I would, yeah. uh, you know, that goes so, up. You know. That's uh, kind of rates up there with being the best looking guy in the laundromat in the middle of Arizona. <laughs> Yeah, you, yeah can, all right. you can do that once in a while. You can claim a little bit of status if you're not yeah. feeling good about yourself. And I recommend that to anybody uh, watching the podcast. Find a laundry mat where uh, you're dominating, you know, yeah. go on. No, I think, I think a lot of the success of those people are, you know, is a testament of the, the teachers that, that, uh, that taught us there at Vicenza. Huh? I mean, you had some pretty, you know, pretty good teachers, uh, you know, Hakeem, uh, you know, uh, Childs, I like Childs, math teacher, he was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Cosell, uh, you know, Cleb, uh, mm -hmm. Chula, uh, Richie's, uh, you know, all those, uh, Solomon, uh, you know, all those teachers. I've been studying the yearbook, man, I'm telling you. Your, your yeah. teacher <laughs> recollections, on, you're on point. Oh, I, well, that but should no, work for you, did it? <laughs> no, it didn't, it didn't work for me, I, I didn't but, listen. Let, let's no. be honest here. You know, John works at a gas station. He's That's in right. charge of the I, I, snacks. Yeah, I did that. I did, yeah, I did that at Summer Hire, remember? <laughs> With me. That was my first that, Summer Hire job. Yeah. Yeah, you, you were like the gas. big shot, and you were, you were a couple years older than me. I'm like, this guy knows what's going on. What are we doing, man? I don't know. We're just sweeping this parking lot. That yeah, they, we're sweeping. <laughs> <laughs> that, that GI just yelled at us to sweep. <laughs> It was a crappy, that was one of the crappier jobs. I liked it when I became a lifeguard, but working for that yeah. motor pool, there were some lunatics over there. They oh, yeah. Like, yeah, they were All just the, crazy. Yeah, they, they were. Uh, I, I remember paint, sweeping. I remember sweeping. Uh, you mentioned that. And then uh, painting curbs, and pumping gas, and we were moving yeah. a bunch of stuff from one building to another or this hot tent. Uh, it was just, it was, yeah, we were like, we, we were, were like, like GIs. We were you know, like manual E1's, laborers. E1's getting. Oh, yeah, no, the e yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. E ones were bossing us around. Remember? Yeah, they yeah. were bossing us around, telling us to do this and do that. It's like, uh, okay. But now that I look back, they probably made us do their job. And I'm yeah, I think that so. Out. Yeah. Where, where did you did work, come? summer hire, Paul? Uh, I was lifeguard, lifeguard, and I did a couple of things. I was on the chain gang one one summer. So. That yeah, I did that fun. once a year. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. Did you guys hang out with Derek Gould a lot? Uh, I mean, we, we hung out. I, I didn't. I didn't hang out. He, with a lot he was, well, he lived in Bellagio. He lived down the street. Yeah, he did. Um, so, so yeah. I remember going to his house and watching HBO movies that they recorded on VHS or Beta, right? Sony Beta. I used to remember doing that and watch movies all day long over the weekend or something. That was. I wouldn't big, do anything. That sometime. was a big. That was a big topic, though, right? To get recorded movies, like yeah, know, oh yeah. Was, Someone, one of your relatives mailed you eight hours. They just press record. Here's eight hours of the television right. cycle. Hopefully, I get a movie and a half in there or something. Right. right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I yeah, I think. Good. Uh, yeah, HBO was just coming out. So they had a bunch of movies on HBO. So people would record HBO and send them to their family members overseas. Well, I, I, did a, I did a podcast with Mike Petty. He was there in 82, I believe, he graduated. You know, it was a guitar guy, came back in 84. He went to University of Maryland, came back. And he said he went to my friend Fred Puitt to his house, who played guitar, played a lot of music, even at like the 4th of July, you know, carnivals they'd have on post. And he's like, yeah. I go to Fred's house, and he presses the button, and it's MTV. And he's like, oh, my gosh. As a musician, that was like drugs, you know I mean? Seeing that level of entertainment over <laughs> oh, there. Yeah. yeah, we had, what, one channel, right? SCB? SCB. Yeah, that was it, SCB. Uh, and there was a reporter on AFN that made it to, uh, C I think, CNN and Fox. Uh, forgot his name. He just recently retired, but he started his career in AFN, which is kind of neat. That's but, I worked, yeah, I worked there. man. I like yeah. SCB. This is SCB. I worked there as a kid for <laughs> a couple of years. And uh, remember Coex, where you'd have a job? Yeah. Uh, right? You could go did like. You the, uh, did you do the uh, Georgie uh, radio? I did that, and I was trying to run the radio station, but they kicked me and Mark Parkins out because we cranked the music real loud, and we were making really bad dedications, like, Bobby looks, you know, <laughs> Bobby looks stupid in those pants. Ha, ha. I mean, we were like evil. You know, we were shock jocks before, long before Howard Stern. We lasted yeah. about an hour, I think, and then never again. You know. Oh, I, they I, took I, you off the air. Huh? Oh, yeah. that Remember that, the radio station there in that hut? Yeah, I remember the radio station. Yeah, yeah in the huts. Yeah. That, look, that looked like a high-tech spaceship. Especially, yeah. I mean, did you guys have boom boxes or did you have a little AM radio? Because that was our thing over there, having music, man. Yeah, we had a, uh, most of our friends had the big boom boxes. Uh, and then we started getting uh, these Sony Walkmans, right? Oh, yeah. So that was kind of our thing was the Sony Walkman. So we walked around with our Sony Walkman. Yeah, I mean, were you, guys sets, in, right? were you guys into Funky Town a lot, like Teddy Spittle? Funky Town? Yeah, no, that. I introduced Ted to. Uh, yeah, he liked that song. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Funky Town. Uh, yeah. No, I introduced Ted to the group Queen. He liked Queen. And so Funky I, Town. I, I to, yeah, Funky Town. Okay, <laughs> Funky Town. All right, you want to sing some, Paul? Go ahead, man. A couple <laughs> bars, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't remember it, but yeah, you go ahead. Well, no, Ted, Teddy Spittle. You know, he kind of had that disco vibe, and uh, that suited him. He was, uh, but I, I played with him on the post. I put like, guess who was in the funky town back in Italy? Teddy Spittle. I saw him jam out to it 20 times on the North 40. Rewind that, played it again. Funky town. I'm like, okay, yeah. fine. And you know, there, there you go. <laughs> that was it. But what music did you guys listen to? Bee Gees? I mean, what were you guys into? Oh man, I was into Journey, Boston, Queen. Uh, and then later, uh, Def Leppard. Uh, Scorpions, uh, yeah, Foreigner, yeah. Uh, oh, Foreigner, Foreigner was big. Yeah. Boston, yeah, Boston, Boston too. Boston. Yeah, then and then Duran Duran and all those, uh, you know, Duran Duran, Duran. Kind of kicked in, yeah. Molly Hatchet, Leonard Skinner, oh. yeah, Funky Town. <laughs> hey, <laughs> Molly Hatchet, Leonard Skinner, Funky Town is is eight track music, baby. <laughs> That's when people still had those eight tracks in their cars. Yeah. They came from the States and they had like, if they had two or three, eight, eight you can even buy them. The eight tracks. 
if they had some eight-track cassettes, it was either Molly Hatchet or probably Funky Town. But oh, well, they, <laughs> that's how it works. Cat Stevens. What was that? Yeah. Lon, Lon, yeah, Cat Stevens, Lionel Richie, Jackson Brown. Yeah. Jackson Jackson Brown. Yeah. Uh, what was the the song that uh, we used to? The uh, cross country girls used to listen to. Hmm. I don't know. Oh, Jeez. Oh, man. That is a tough. That's a pretty broad question. question. I don't remember that. <laughs> I, I won't. Was, I won't uh, be winning. I won't be winning any Cadillacs today on this Hollywood. You know, story. but but you know you know what um, you know what brought back memories for me is when uh, Lionel Richie was on uh, American Idol as a judge, right? I remember. Um, I, don't remember I think it was the '84 season. Remember that, John? We were we had to shuttle back and forth. And we used to play the Lionel Richie all night long, and we used oh, to man, we played that, yeah, yeah, all night long. We used to play like all every time. every time we made that yeah. commute between our where we were staying to the to the gym for the tournament. I think it was right. it the name oh yeah, the, I yeah, I think it, yeah, in our, my senior year, yeah, yeah, I think Ted selected that song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe he'll come no, on and defend himself. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, why, why is Teddy hiding? Let's get into the real roots of this. Podcast. Well, I, you know, I, you know, I, I thought about that. It, it, you're going to have a hard time getting Teddy on, I think, unless it's in a group setting because Teddy is a, I mean, he's the nicest guy you'll ever meet. Uh, he doesn't like to talk a whole lot about himself other than if he's joking about himself. Uh, so he may feel a little uncomfortable coming on to having to talk about himself, but um, that, that's what I think his reluctance to do this, but uh, he likes oh, to talk about other bullshit. people. The reason why yeah, he doesn't okay, want to come well, on is because the only hair he has left is on his chin. So <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it. Look at this. Look at this, man. I, like I, real I, hair. Huh. Yeah, look at this. <laughs> that's my real hair, too. Look at this. <laughs> this is the it's turning a little gray, but you know. Yeah, look at the Ratcliffe showing off the nice bush, <laughs> bush league. <laughs> bush league with the Ratcliffe. Yeah. Oh, you guys got to get that. Paul's, I'm good. I'm, I'm with right. you there. I think Paul's oh, yeah. right. He's Yeah, he doesn't have any hair left, so he doesn't want to come on. You know? That could be it. I think uh, because he was popular in school, I mean, I think now that Facebook, uh, you know, woman of the past can find you. He's happily married. I think all the cheerleaders, <laughs> a lot of the cheerleaders, would start trying to find him again once they could see what he's working with these days. Don't you think? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. I mean, he had a lot of girlfriends too, didn't he? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he made well, out a lot. One of the early guys that kind of kept uh, kind of the, all the, you know, kind of the uh, cougars yeah. together, if you will, right? He started that site yeah. early on. The website, right? then, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I, you can't deny it. I mean, Teddy helped when Facebook didn't exist because you guys remember you would leave and you'd never hear from somebody again. You're not going to call him from Vincenza yeah. at $12 a minute. What's going on in uh, Wisconsin? Uh, we're watching HBO. Oh, cool. I'm watching the tape on it. Great. Anything else? Yeah. No. Okay, bye. You know, you weren't going to keep in touch with people with the cost yeah. of phone calls back then, right? Um, right. It's well, Ted like, was a straight – Ted was pretty straight, too. He didn't, He wasn't that much of a partier either, was he, as no. I recall. He was pretty straightforward. Uh, Lou Craig, James Craig. We were yeah. all kind of dorks, I guess. We didn't do a whole lot. There goes Paul again. So let's talk about Paul. So <laughs> Paul was one of the, you know, Paul was really a dork back then. That's what the girls loved. They loved dorkiness. So that's what he loved. I, I, I didn't have a lot of guys. I didn't hang around with guys a lot in my class. Uh, no. Most of the people I hung around with were, uh, Me, you know. Me, some are higher. Yeah, yeah, some are higher. And then, and then uh, you know, Celeste Richardson. Uh, Lori Adams, uh, Michelle Rolick. Uh, we were all in 84 and we were pretty tight and we were all in the same uh, home ec class, which was fun. So we would, we would uh, make our own lunches during home ec class and eat lunch. We made uh, some casserole in home ec class. You remember that casserole? I'm sure yeah. we all made the same thing. Oh, no, I would make lemon meringue pie every time. Oh, because that's my favorite pie. Me too. Is lemon meringue pie. So, uh, you know, we, we'd hand in our recipe list to uh, Miss Richie. And she, you know, she'd look at it going, what's all this lemon meringue stuff again, right? All those <laughs> ingredients. Oh, we're making lemon meringue pie. Again. So I would make the lemon meringue pie. I'm back. That's, Sorry, that's guys. my favorite. But uh, <laughs> we would do that. With, you know, we had, the, 
We had the, yeah, we just talked about you, man. Were you were you uh, having a cigarette? I figured it. He was having a couple smokes. Yeah. Smoke break, just like he used to do but, back in Vicenza. No, he didn't. But yeah. You guys were no, you, yeah. you guys were very squared away, following a very uh, disciplined life, and it showed up in your basketball. And you know, it's like nobody had to be one way or the other. But you guys were a leading example of that. And I do think a lot of your crew was pretty straight laced overall, except for Derek Gould. That guy was well, a, Derek a wasn't that far out. I mean, he wasn't that far out. I mean, he. Um, I mean, all of us had all of us had issues, right? All of us had yeah our own different issues to deal with, and uh, so you know, it, it's kind of neat. Uh, you know, it's kind of neat to see you doing this uh, where you come from. Uh, yeah. And here we are all together, you know, having to deal with our own stuff. Oh, everybody's and, uh, got life, school, like college, whatever. Everybody's right. everybody's yeah. had to get kicked in the nuts by life since then, by at some point yeah. or another, whether it be a divorce, whether it be not getting that promotion, whether it be having to move, or you know, right. the, the the tax man shows up. Hey, by the way, you can't write <laughs> off that yacht. You can't write <laughs> off that yacht you bought. Okay, whatever it is, uh, you know, maybe you didn't make it in Hollywood. I don't know. You know, but something, so, you know, because not everything lived up to what we thought it would be. I, I didn't really, but for me, I didn't have any expectations. I was like discovering, did you guys know what you wanted to be when you grew up after Vicenza? Um, I want, I, I, you know, I followed him sort of in my dad's footsteps. That's kind of what I wanted to do was uh, federal service. Uh, it's all the life that we had and thought, okay, that sounds good to me. I, I like that and travel world, get to see the world. Uh, so that's what I did. So I became an engineer in federal service and been there ever since. What about you? Paul? Yeah, I love it. Like leaving, you know, high school, college and all that, right? And then, you know, then life kind of takes over, you know, things, other things become more important. Mm -hmm. so, um, so I don't know. You put it in your rear view mirror hard and go, I'm never going to address. I know people they're like, that's over. I'll never look at it. And I go, bullshit. You can't deny that. You can't deny Vicenza. You could probably deny from Vicenza till now about 80% of it and say, bah, don't want to talk about yeah. it. You know, that was the year that I worked at the tire factory putting tires on cars. And it was the same thing every day, every day, every day. But then when I started my lemonade business, life got exciting. I, meet, I met people. It was social, whatever. I mean, we've had those days, you know. I mean, I've, I've been out at sea for months doing nothing but being out at sea. But now I look yeah. back and I can enjoy the nothingness of what that was when I was in the Navy. Sure. You know what I mean? So well, that was pretty cool. But back then it wasn't cool. I couldn't wait to get back. So we're all either fast forwarding or running behind. But I, I think that we grew up overseas in a very unique place. We all knew each other before any of us had any politics or any jobs. We were just ourselves. We were a clean slate. You know, now you see people on Facebook arguing, I'm this, I'm that, I'm this and that. Hey, we knew each other before any of that mattered. We were in a neutral yeah. zone. We were like yeah. a Swiss, a Swiss basketball school. I guess that's yeah. my description, <laughs> you know. But you know, people change, and then you're like, oh, I don't want to go back. Like some of us left there, and maybe something didn't work out for us. And that was a uh, when you're young, you you take everything more severely. Like if I didn't get a D in that class, I'd be driving a Corvette right now, which is not true. <laughs> because you bought a Volvo. No, all those experience yeah all those experiences make us who we are today right so yeah uh you know it's it's, it's to me it uh uh you know it's how you how you how you look at it and how you how you move forward yeah you know but we're at an age where this so, is like, this is I the mean, sweet spot of people that we knew yeah you know how i was many, gonna say bullshit again i can yeah. see him you know, that's yeah. all bullshit man <laughs> Yeah, you feel like wait, you serious, man? It was like yeah. you got, you got, you got to go meet yeah, up. I learned a lot in high school. Right? It was a springboard, man. <laughs> <That's a lot laughs> <of things. laughs> yeah. No, we were growing up. We were Paul and I were. Uh, we had a lot of competition between us, and uh, we sometimes we'd be at each other's throats with that competition. I mean, we were pretty, you know, pretty rough, and maybe that's what. Kind of, you know. Well, I think steel. there's a few, quite a few and people then. that aren't talking to their siblings on the podcast. I'm not naming names, and I've yeah. even been there. I've even been there at times. Me and my brother are just button heads, so it's normal. Yeah. It's normal. Yeah. And he, you yeah. don't want to say there was an intended sibling rivalry. You didn't choose one. You didn't name one. It just nah. happens. 
It just yeah. happens. And you're yeah. and while you're in it, you're not even realizing that you're doing it. Yeah. You just know so that we would be playing – uh, right? I mean, we'd go out of each throws. We'd be playing Nerf, uh, Nerf basketball in Paul's room. Remember that? He doesn't and want we to would just say, one. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this to you. Bam. And slam it on the <laughs> I'm going to do this to you. Bam. Oh, my gosh. And so we would, we would say, okay, we're going to take this move to the courts. Yeah. I'm going to do this. Next game, I'm going to be doing this. And he'd do his thing. And we played Nerf Hoop in, in his – I think we were, what, sophomore, freshman year? Something like mm-hmm. that, playing Nerf Hoop in, in, in Paul. <laughs> you guys, it would get – I mean, it would get, it would get rough. I mean, it'd be like tackle football. It'd get rough sometimes. Well, that's pretty. That's pretty normal, though. I mean, that some people. Yeah. I mean, when they got older, whether your brother or sister could have joined a certain uh, profession, got became a member of a cult. Uh, you know, you know, cause seriously, uh, that could happen. <laughs> Not my brother. Probably guys like you more than me and Sean, but more like you guys, anyways. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you're probably right, man. No, no, that shit has happened. There's somebody that joined a cult from Vichens. I don't know who they are. And there's someone that joined an extreme religion where I can't talk to you because you drink Sambuca. We can't be friends and whatever. You watch rated R movies. We can't be friends. And that kind of weird shit happened, you know? I mean, you guys were, you guys, I think you guys get some of the best out of it, though. You guys get to enjoy yourselves. It was one big game. You know, that's the way I see it. I could be wrong. But I'm just like what I observed because I was there before you and after you pretty much, you know. Yeah, we would uh, we played sports together. There was a lot of competition there, you know, basketball, uh, cross country track. But uh, uh, Paul would get the better half. You know what they call Paul, right? Remember, you used to call people by their last names, right? So they call the older guys. So they called me Ratcliffe, and you know what they call Paul. They call him Mouse Cliff. That was his name. So <laughs> call me Ratcliffe. Call Paul Ratcliffe. Right? right? Am, I, am, I, am I telling the truth? Uh, yeah, yeah. Were, that was yeah. his nickname because he was the younger one. But he used that. to, you know, he took over in sports after a while. You know, he just, he just started beating. So. Weren't you guys like both homecoming but, you know. kings? Nah. Uh, I wasn't. Paul, maybe Paul was. Maybe? That wasn't my thing. I, I think so. I, yeah. No? Oh, good. Yeah, well, that was your book, man. Check it out. I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, man. Let me see. Let me look at this yearbook. Hold on. Let me let me bring it out here. Hold on. This is the A3 yearbook, man. Hold on. Oh, let me, let me... Who have you guys been wanting to have on the hear from on the podcast? Have me grill them. You, you know who I've uh, yeah. heard from that I'd love to hear hear uh, from uh, would be uh, remember Molly Solomon. I remember her. Yeah, I, I you know I. Just kind of lost touch, and you know, I think she's had a pretty. You know, we were talking about others that had pretty successful careers in the military. I think she had a pretty successful one in broadcast. So, and that was something she always wanted to do. I remember. And um, yeah. in fact, um, in fact, in Indianapolis, she came to town one time, and I was living there at the time. And you know, we, we went out and had you know had dinner or whatever. And yeah, she she was I was, she was just starting off then, and now I think. I think she runs a golf channel or something from last I heard, but yeah, that's, that's someone I would like to hear from. You know, I saw, saw the Lehman's, you know, the, the other day. Um, so that, that was, was fun. You guys didn't know about that butane, did you? What's that? You guys didn't know nothing about that butane, did you? No, no, no. no that was a fun time. <laughs> no, uh, like, I had no idea, man. Well, I mean, if you try butane, like I might or might not have done neither conform or deny doing it being on a trampoline in someone's backyard and we were doing backflips and uh i did a super backflip i got about 10 feet up in the air and i flew off the trampoline and i landed you know when the grass gets real muddy like you could stuff your foot like real deep into it because it's like that it's like very marshy grass it went all the way up to my knees i was like woo, stuck there to my knees i was like wow ah! <laughs> and and uh, everything's going wow 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 i'm like whoa it was like a really crazy <laughs> moment and uh, that's kind of fun. You guys never experimented with. But I just want to share it with you. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. might want to try that out, Paul. I think yeah, now maybe out. maybe no, it's the time. <laughs> you guys were smoking. Yeah, you guys were pretty square. I mean, it's okay though. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know who I'd like to see? I'd like to see together. That's kind of funny. 
uh, Johnny Cohut and Jenny Pellerita. That's possible. The think, two of them together. I think Sean's uh, working on they them. Were, they were hilarious together. Have, you, have you guys been to the reunions at all? Because Johnny's the ambassador of all reunions. No, I, I haven't no. been to one. I have not been to one either. Um, it, well, you like to drink now, yeah. so they're fun. Well, you maybe. Can, now, now that you can drink a lot now, it's a good time. Uh, I went to I, one. I don't know. I'd, I'd, I don't know. I'd, I'd go to the... I might go to the next one if there if there's ever one. I, you know, it'd be nice to pre-screen everybody, see them all on a podcast, know who's going, right? You're like, oh, okay, yeah, I feel the vibe. But no, oh no, no, that'll be good. No, it's good. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know. Just do one of these, you know? <laughs> right. No, I went to one. I had a blast. I was partying in San Antonio. My buddy Mark Parkin showed up, and there's a lot of guys from older years, but they were great. They were fun. You know, uh, Tree made it out there. Tree makes it out to a lot of these. So, you know, it was like a few people from my era, some younger, some older, but there's everybody you knew because you're there for three or four years and different ages and ranges kind of like cross you like this, right? Yeah. Like you knew the different seniors when you were younger. They get older, they left, and then the new kids came as you were leaving. So there's kind of that cycle of people. If you're there for three or four years, you probably in a way know people that were there another four years and people that were after four years. So it kind of yeah. connects it all right. together. But uh, yeah. no, I, so I saw your sister went to one of her reunions. She posted something about going to reunion in Germany. And I'm going, okay. Yeah. Cause that was where she finished high school. That was like the, the prime years there. Right. Yeah. Frankfurt high. Yeah. She, Frankfurt, that's where yeah. she graduated. Yeah, she went to her, I think, what was that? Right after the 80, right after uh, 85, right after yeah. you graduated, I think Paul. I think that's when yeah. my mother and dad and Keiko moved up to Frankfurt. So she spent 86 and 87 up there, graduated in 87. Germany was but cool. Yeah. I, I would have liked to be there as a high schooler. It would have been fun. But Italy was awesome. I mean, my dad moved down there because the weather was nicer. You know, and that was really right. what it was. Because we lived in Germany before up in Bitburg. And uh, he gets that call. And I said it on a podcast before. They're like, hey, we need a PE teacher. He's like, uh, is it warm there? They're like, yeah. He's like, I'm coming. <laughs> he didn't. That was that was his I'm whole there. sales pitch. Because it was like foggy in Germany. It was foggy and stuff. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. The only upside of Germany was McDonald's and gummy bears. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did you guys? Uh, well, you need. Good. Let me get you. Uh, you need to really get Ted out on this thing. Uh, I know you. Were, uh, there was some talk about having the '84 team basketball team on. That'd be kind of fun. Uh, but Ted really needs to get on here, so we'll. Oh, we'll, yeah. we'll help you out, man. We'll we'll uh, we'll bring him on board. Peer well, pressure. Greenwell. Get Greenwell on yeah. too. I want Greenwell. Green. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where's uh, Greenwell? Uh, yeah. You know, hey, I don't know. I lost a touch he with in the Greenwell. DC area, maybe. I think he's still in the DC area, as far as I know. Every time I go to DC, I haven't been to DC in a while. I go and make sure I make a point to go see Ted and Kelly and I uh, have dinner with them but uh, I haven't been there in a couple of years so I'm, well Virginia uh, Virginia is uh, I think where he's at he's got his big cell phone company thing and uh, oh, his, his old nickname was Tank because he was kind of a big kid but then he yeah. lost all the weight yeah. and he doesn't like being called Tank anymore so no <laughs> um, you know. uh, I'm sorry he's still Tank to us man yeah well, come on Tank and it was like he's tank. he's not so imposing why are you calling him Tank well no, he's uh, <laughs> And, and uh, Marty Mullen, mm -hmm. I'd like to see him. Uh, he hung around with Tank and uh, they, uh, who else? We have a funny story, Tank and I. We sold each yeah. other's shoes. I sold him my white on white ponies. He sold me his uh, neon green on black ponies. Uh, I don't know why we were, we were like a couple of Al Bundys back in Vicenza. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> it was all about the shoes. I thought you guys would be like getting into shoes, like, yeah, shoes. You're like, yeah, we had Diodorus. But I was just too busy making baskets to look at what kind of shoes I wore. So it's okay. Don't worry about me. No, uh, yeah. we, 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 cared about, we cared about shoes. We had uh, ponies, Adidas. We, we didn't go for the, uh, you know, the trend, like the Top Tens or Air Jordans or stuff like that. Oh, we went get them. Just off. Yeah, you yeah. can get them, and then we, we, you know, we get the off kind of stuff. Theodora's. Uh, I remember back they had logos. It was, it was uh, about uh, guys on the team had logos. Now back then it was about leather and pleather, wasn't it? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. He stopped yeah. on us. Okay, cool. We'll talk about him again. <laughs> yeah, he had uh, Paul. Paul would wear the Chuck uh, Chuck Taylors, right? The comedy really? Chuck Taylors. Remember the that? Yeah, no. we call them, yep, we call them Bobos. <laughs> Bobos and Cut Buddies. Yeah, we call yeah, them the, Bobos. Yeah, those were the yeah. canvas street shoes. The canvas, right? No support. Right, the canvas Chuck Taylors. Yeah, mm-hmm. black ones. Yeah, the ones you sign out from the gym, right? <laughs> <laughs> Could you sign those out for me? I'd like to get some used stinky sn- sneakers, please. Like yeah. bowling shoes. Like yeah, oh yeah, bowling shoes probably yeah, would have been better. Shoes. That would have been cool to show up to a game with bowling shoes just to say, yeah, you guys are so weak, we're gonna wear bowling shoes and beat you. That yeah. would have intimidated them. But uh yeah. yeah, you guys got to spend a lot of time. What was one of your favorite trips or uh memories from your games there? Like sports oh, trips. Shoot. Um, I don't know. That one tournament we went to, I was talking about where we played the song, the Lionel Richie song. That was a. Uh, I think year. that was. Uh, I think it was uh, in Naples. Was it was in Naples? It was like it? A, no, Brindisi. That's where the tournament Brindisi. was. It was in Brindisi, 84. Yeah. yeah. It was like a 13 hour, 13 hour bus ride, man. Yeah. Better yeah. That's all, that's all we played. <laughs> Brindisi yeah. was a rough trip, though. I took a trip down. That was like yeah. forever. It was like forever land, like 13 hours, whereas yeah, uh, Naples was like eight and a half or so. Like some of those yeah. trips you took overnight because it took all day to get there. Yeah. Those were some long hauls. But Brindisi. No, we went to Brindisi for, for track, too, one year, and we uh, went to the beach and hung out at the beach when we first arrived there. Remember that, Paul? We, yeah, vaguely. We hung out at the beach. Everyone got suntanned and got burnt and then had to run, had to put on their shoes. <laughs> that was not fun, man. I took a grease, a grease trip. We went in March with the teen club. And it, it, most people yeah. get sunstroke. Like they were getting bubbles yeah. of water in their arms and they were like, ah, mm. shivering because they were so, they, they had a fever, but they were shivering because they thought they were cold. And I'm like, what is wrong with these people? They're sitting in the sauna and it's like 112 degrees in this gym that we're sleeping in in Greece or Crete. I'm like, and I didn't get any uh, heat stroke and I'm not like Mr. Suntan Jackson here. I mean, oh, I'm pretty like uh, light complected. And ironically, I didn't fry as bad as everybody, but I was also drinking gin and I had a large one of those thermoses yeah. full of gin and Kool-Aid and me and Mark Parkins were drinking and we were like only two. So if you would have drank <laughs> a lot of gin in the hot sun, <laughs> oh man I feel, uh, like, I feel like Will Ferrell when I'm describing this and then Jim <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just messing with you guys and you believe him because he's so serious I like to have deadpan humor but yeah it, it's, it's funny I mean like I saw you guys a lot because you were there where my dad was hey dad am I getting right? Oh, here's the rat clips hey what's up Paul what's up John work with John um I went to a lot of discos, yeah. so I would see you guys there. No, you guys never yeah. went to discos. Never. <laughs> no. uh, did you guys go to a lot of teen club dances? That wasn't our scene. Or, uh, no. Uh, no, that wasn't my scene. No. No, uh, I didn't. I no, you guys just played ball and then went home to beat the crap out of each other in another ball game. Can't wait to get home to beat my brother <laughs> yeah. in some Nerf hoops. I mean, yeah, we played Nerf. Yeah, so Nerf hoops, man. We played all that. Home. No, we, you know, we had to, we had to get up at like four thirty in the morning every morning to deliver papers. So, you know, we didn't, we didn't. I mean, we'd come come home. Our our day was pretty packed, right? After practice, it was. We were getting home by what six thirty. Have dinner, mm-hmm. do homework, go to bed. Get up for four thirty, deliver papers. Uh, you know, I'd probably go back to sleep maybe a half hour and then get ready to go to school. Get to school by what? Seven forty five, something like that. You had no time. It yeah, wasn't then, like in Step Brothers uh, where there was well, so much more room. All day and then practice right after yeah, and then, you know, all over yeah, again. I don't so. remember partying a whole lot. I mean you know, never. Uh, I mean the one party I remember was uh, the graduation party. I forget where it was. It was some some picnic. Area. I remember burning picnic tables and our parents oh. were showing up. <laughs> like we're like, whoa! Uh, it was at the it was at the Ride and Gun Club Lake, Lake Marola. Yeah, yeah, that was it. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't remember anything from that night. It was like a blur. 
it was crazy. I mean, people were sleeping in bushes. They didn't bring camping gear. I think yeah. I'll just lay here because everyone else is laying. Oh, here. parents go. Oh, they're having a senior. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, you know, drop in. <laughs> I, I don't think they. <laughs> They dropped in, all right, and so like they were all passed out, and <laughs> picnic tables burnt to the. <laughs> the picnic I think, tables. Chaz, I think it was Chaz that started though. <laughs> Remember Donaldson? Good old Chaz. <laughs> no, I yeah. should throw out names, but uh, it's okay. Yeah. No, Chaz. Chaz throw out his name. I like that. I went and party with Chaz um, and Freddie Parkins and Mark Parkins at Utah State after I joined the Navy. Right after I went to my um, A school, which is like AIT you know, where you get your training for your MOS and the army, you know, your rating in the Navy is what we call it. But I went out there and I went to Utah state and there was Chaz, there was Mark and it was Vicenza all over again with a whole another group of people and uh, a lot more women, a lot more women to talk to than there <laughs> was Vicenza. Yeah. Utah state. Yeah. Well, really? That's what's yeah. up. You don't know what's up. Oh my God. Yeah. You ain't been to Utah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, anything compared to you know, Vicenza, it was like a lily yeah, pond of an me. island, you know? Go ahead. It reminds me of a story. Uh, so when I went off to college, right, in, in, in college, the fre in freshman year, right, everyone, all the freshmen were like, hey, man, what's your name? You know, where are you from? Would you go to high school? That sort of thing. So I would tell them, okay, yeah, went to, went to Italy, uh, you know, graduated from Italy, from Vicenza. Oh, you're Italian. No, actually, you know, my, my mother and dad, my mother's looking now and my dad, uh, and they get kind of confused, right? Like, yeah. So I go through this whole story every time. So after a while, it's like, yeah, I'm from Montana. And <laughs> that was it, man. The conversation ended. I was like, cool. <laughs> I, I have a different so version, like, right? When I went to school, uh, right? Nice young lady who asked you. Did, you went to home. school? She goes, <laughs> she goes, are you from it? I said, I'm from Italy. She goes, really? <laughs> What <laughs> Joe no? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Both of them are very nice. No, yeah. no, you should have used the accent. I, I like, you know, when I heard Borat for the first time, you know, the movie Borat, you yeah. know, he, he sounded like those Italian kids. I like you. You'd be my girlfriend. Like you ride my <laughs> motorcycle, American girl. American girl, come back. I love you. American girl, I am a Paolo. No, that's, <laughs> that's how that went down. You guys, uh, you know, they were very good at that. It didn't work, but they were good at it. That's all that matters. Yeah. Uh, they had pride in their, you know, American girl, I like you. Come to my house. We eat that on chata. Very nice. No, but it's, uh, it's so much like Borat. Um, yeah. So my, but then it's bad. My wife's Russian. So if I'm talking to some of her friends and I'm doing that accent by accident, I have to be careful. You know? Yeah. So like, what? Yeah. You, make, you make joke, huh? Pretty funny, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'll be on to your next wife, man. <laughs> yeah, then then it'll be another crazy podcast. Another podcast. This is All a right. podcast people I've talked to during my last seven wives. Is the name of the podcast. <laughs> That's how it works. So, yeah, there's some of the people I'd like to get on for you guys. Um, uh, and I ask whoever comes on to come on, you know, bring yeah. people that they ran into. You actually, Paul, you can actually hang out with Ralph and drink alcohol. He's, uh, he lives down the street. He's got a good business in Louisville. He does pretty well. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's done well for himself. Yeah, him and his wife lived there. He was there during the time you were there. We played, I don't, you didn't play football. I don't think you guys didn't play football, right? No. You guys were running cross country? Yeah, yes. pretty much. That's the season. I got into running. Did you guys break any major records running, like miles or anything like that? Maybe Paul. Yeah. yeah, don't you still have the school record? I don't know what the school record is for the 5K, I don't know. 5, you know, I, I remember just, I, I mean, we ran every morning to do the newspaper right thing. But I don't know, I, just, I remember uh, trying out for cross country just to get in shape for basketball and figure yeah. out, oh, you know. That was good thinking. Was pretty fast. So. <laughs> 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 That's kind of like how it happened, but yeah. I, I, uh, I can't remember just, I mean, I used to do, uh, I don't know, I we used to do sub fives, you know, for, yeah. a few mile, for four or five miles. So That's pretty strong, sub five for four or five. Yeah, that, now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 18. Yeah, I can't yeah. make, can't <laughs> make <laughs> one. I know. <laughs> so 
Oh, yeah, I haven't ran. I haven't ran since then. <laughs> I, uh, I didn't know I could do it till later, even though I smoked. I rode my bicycle 25 miles a day. I did like 419 and 723 for mm. a mile and a half was my best in the Navy. And I, wow. but I actually ran an extra 100 yards. So it's probably less than that. But it was yeah. two, two sub five pace. But to do it for miles, you got my respect because that's, you're great. Yeah, you're a great one miler. Are you a five miler? Are you a six miler? Like, yeah, you were cool back there. You're not cool anymore. I'm still ahead of you. I'm still going. And I'm still going at that pace. You know, you have to get on your bicycle to catch me. So, yeah. yeah, I never focused on it. But, you know, by doing so much cardio in Italy, like riding your bike 20 miles a day to your friend's houses and walking everywhere, you had cardio, you know, and you yeah. guys played ball all the time. So, that's well, interesting. Yeah. You planned your running for your basketball. I didn't think about that. Yeah, we used to run uh, cross country practice. Hakeem would drive us to the uh, on a bus and drive us to the base of uh, uh, Betty, yeah. Monte, yeah, Monte Perico. And we would have to run under the arches up and down, up and down, up and down. That was torture. Yeah. That was torture. That would get you in shape fast. Oh yeah, up those arches up and down that oh, up and down yeah. the hill, Monte Berico. That's what we the... do that. What once once a week? Once a week, yeah. Once a week, we'd go up there and just run up and down the hills. Man, that's all we did for practice. All right. Hang on, hey, one second. I'll be right back. He's gonna go. Oh, he gotta he's go. Gonna, he's gonna go have a smoke. He smokes yeah, a lot. So now. let's talk about him again. Yeah. He what? Yeah, he smokes yeah. a lot. Dude. Yeah, he's doing all that stuff. <laughs> My brother. Your younger brother but, was a lot uh, more mischievous than you. I've noticed. He, well, he was uh, he was a little bit more outgoing than I was. So he was in all the clubs, you know, uh, the uh, activities in, at high school uh, more than I was. I was kind of kind of uh, kind of more to my myself. Uh, just hung but around. Right, just but right now, of, right now, people. though, you're leading the show. What happened I, to Paul? Am I talking too much? No, you're doing oh, great. You're doing so it's much the, better. You know, Paul can't. It's Vino. Up. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, I, 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 you know, there's some good bright points in our high school, and you know, and I'm, I'm convinced that uh, that experience in, in uh, Vicenza is kind of uh, unique in a lot of ways. Uh, a lot of good teachers, uh, a lot of great uh, students. Uh, you know, so it all uh, sports. You know, I, I probably wouldn't be playing high school sports uh, if I were in the states. Uh, we probably weren't good enough. But I uh, had an opportunity to play in Vicenza in Italy. So that, I mean, that, that helps, you know, teamwork. I think it does. I think it builds, it builds confidence. Yeah, it builds character. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it well, does. I mean, yeah. you guys' running numbers were good for statewide. I mean, what Paul just said. Well, that was, that was yeah. you can get into a university at that numbers back then in running. Yeah. If you're going to go be a miler, you could probably break four if you really focused on it back then. Yeah, we, we, you know? as Paul was saying, though, we ran just because – to get in shape for basketball, that's what we did. No, that's and then it turns out we were pretty, we were pretty good. Paul was great at it. Uh, you know, we were pretty good at it. And, uh, so we just uh, okay. Just, but but you guys, lo you guys loved it. That's all that matters. Is you did what you love. I think that's yeah. the secret to life. Is if oh, you yeah. do what you love, nobody can take that from you. And sure. what you like to do is so much. Like at least you guys aren't skiers, because skiing costs so much damn money now. It's like two thousand yeah. dollars for a season pass. For basketball, just to grab the ball and go. It's still one of the most affordable sports to do, pretty much. You know, you guys yeah, still hoop, hoop it up now or no? No? No, I don't. No, no I, I don't. don't. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I coach my kids, you know. So, you know, just say, hey, look, when you get the ball, just, like, let it rip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Defense, don't don't worry about defense. <laughs> yeah, don't no defense. That's no, boring. defense. Yeah, that'll come later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's how it works. Yeah. Team? No, there's there's no there's no oh, I. Man. There's no team and I. There we yeah. go. Right, that's how it works. Yeah. But that's that's the thing. It's like you guys you guys see each other much or just on Zoom podcasts? Uh, uh been so a few years. We tried. I don't know. It's just yeah, like, it has. It's been a few years. But, uh, it, yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, this COVID stuff is not, you know, helping much in terms of traveling. Yeah. Uh, so true. we'll call each other every once in a while and see, just kind of see what's going on. Look, I'm better uh, than you in basketball. Screw up. Boom. I figure yeah. I know how the phone call goes. 
I get it. No, yeah. I am. I got you. I hung up first. You suck. Yeah, I get it. No, it's yeah. good, but I'm going out. I think I'm going out by where your folks live. Um, my wife North Carolina? An offer. Yeah, my wife got an offer in Asheville. Um, but we're going to go by the coast to spend a couple oh. of days. Yeah, okay, next, yeah, they're week, in... Next uh, week. Outer Banks? They're, well, they're sort of south. They're near Myrtle Beach in okay. a place called Calabash, North Carolina. Okay. I will go to their um, house right in the street and not tell them I'm coming. Yeah, there you go. They'll be yeah. like, who's this big man at my house? Yeah. Candy. Weirdo. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they'll probably call you co- they'll, yeah, they'll probably call you Coach D, man. Yeah. They're hey, like, Coach hey, D, where's the boys? Like where's the boys? Give me a whistle. Where's the boys? <laughs> Oh my gosh, Coach! The, your mom walks in. Oh my gosh, I saw a ghost outside. It's Coach D. He's on the porch. He's gonna whistle. He's looking for his sons. I'm tripping. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's a good. That's a good prank. Just mess with each other's parents like that. No, um, oh, we're gonna yeah. go. We're gonna go there. You guys been in North Carolina before? Oh yeah. Yeah, uh, I've been there I mean, a couple I, times. We go to. We, yeah, we go to Hilton Head every year. So we drive through Asheville a lot. I mean, that's that's like way up in the mountains. So yeah, yeah, it's like way up there. Huh? Yeah, it's it's nice. It seems like to be a nice town. Have you ever been or? No, I, I went to the Appalachians when I was living in uh, Murray, Kentucky, and uh, back then it was kind of a strange time because it was a lot like Deliverance. You know the movie with Burt Reynolds, where them strange yeah. guys try to Deliverance. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The pretty mouth territory. Little band, yeah, was like little banjo playing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Near, 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 near. I went out <laughs> yeah. to get some chewing tobacco. I was 15. I'm talking to the guy behind the store. What do you want, man? All right. I'm like, what? <laughs> you, want some, you want some chaw? You want chewing tobacco? Squeal like a, come on. Yeah, squeal, squeal like, like a pig. pig. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly. <laughs> I go, no, what does that mean? <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, it's just, yeah, that, I was like, is that where I'm going? Did near, 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 near walk into the town? I'm like, no, we're yeah. not here. Yeah. I don't know. I've been in California for since 87. I don't really see myself moving. I will go there, appease my wife, and see if it's something that we want. But, you know, there's places you can go that are cheap. You can have a huge house in Kansas for fifty to $100,000. But then you won't have any work or your friends or you'll just be like in the middle of a big old field. And then yeah. a tornado will come mow your ass down and you're like, damn it. We saved all that money for this. No. But it's just like there's the grass is always greener. I just feel like moving around. Actually, I want to move to Europe. I want to move to Spain. That's my plan. Right. I went back. I yeah, went back there. I loved it. I don't feel Italy the same way. I want to go to Spain. Uh, that's, wow, that's a cool. place, man. I mean, you know, you can live like a king and uh, go swimming all the time and go hiking and go up the mountains. It's nice. But California yeah. is like we that went. Too. You know, we went year railing in. Uh, uh, what the summer of '85, right, Paul? And we went yeah. into Spain, and uh, that was a lot of fun. We went, uh, we went up to Amsterdam and then cross over to Spain, and we went to Gibraltar and hung out there for a little bit on the beach. And then uh, where we hit, we hit Seville. Yeah, uh, we went Urelling with uh, Chris Summers and uh, Barry Penicky. Oh, that was, a, that of, was a blast. A couple of great guys. Yeah. Yeah, the Barry would be a good one to have on the podcast. If you have yeah, Barry out. and Barry he's and I. And, uh, he's been in touch yeah. with my parents. I mean, he's a pilot. I mean, yeah. he flies into uh, North Carolina area every once in a while. He stops by and things. My parents. Yeah, he'd be a good one. Yeah, he was. He's going to come visit happens. me next time he comes out here to California. So I'm yeah. I'm kind of in a transition, East Coast West Coast. No humidity, humidity. Uh, oh. Man. Yeah. Cool, cool skateboarder culture, not so much skateboarder culture. I'm kidding. I'm not in a skateboarder. Well, it's, diff- it's different. I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, hell, yeah. Kentucky was a culture shock for me. You live there now. <laughs> I mean, it was. Yeah. After yeah. Vicenza. I mean, imagine I was born in New Hampshire. Just we lived in this town in the woods and we were gone. When I was three, we'd go to Germany. Like, was es los, Lena? Dads, why go me be a bitter? Next thing you know, we're in Italy, you know, <laughs> you know, we're, we're, we're over in, in Italia and I'm speaking Italian by six years old going why? And we lived there and everybody that came there was all 50 states of America. You know what I mean? That's what you got people yeah. from all 50 states. So yeah, I yeah. kind of played duck, duck, goose. I'm like, I'm not moving there. Those people are strange. Those people are cool. 
oh, the pretty girls from that place. And there's probably more pretty girls live there. So kind of my deductions were to get to California or Florida or Texas were the three choices. Now I've been to Texas. It's nice, but it's not really me. Uh, Florida, I enjoyed, but it's too humid for me. Really liked it. Um, California, I just got stationed here and I wanted to stay here. But it kicks your ass. It's so expensive. It's like me telling you I live in Monaco and I'm broke. I live in Monaco. If I could, I could, cool. I could yeah, wow, good for you. <laughs> yeah, in a phone booth. Why well, don't eat out? I don't do anything. <laughs> what do you do? You know what I mean? It's like that. Yeah. You're like, really? That's really cool. You make $1 million on paper. So it's like making five grand in Kentucky. Okay, I get it. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's kind of how yeah. it works. You can yeah. get the same size tent that you're living in right sure. now, pal. This is yeah. a tent. I'm in one of the homeless cities, <laughs> as you guys wanted to know. But I mean, why Kentucky, Paul? Um, wife's family's from uh, this area, Louisville. So, you know, things kind of lined up and had a job here, job offer here, moved from Cincinnati, actually. Spent a long time in Cincinnati and then uh, moved here, I don't know, 10 years ago, I'd say. So we love, we yeah, love he, here. He went to Purdue and he stayed in the Midwest after that. He just went to Purdue University and then stayed. Yeah, just kind of been around, yeah. Just kind of yeah. Indy, Chicago. Cincy and then here, so it's great. I mean, we love it here. Nice, nicer climate than Ohio, you think? Or oh yeah, yeah. We're we're a little bit we're a little bit south, you know. So um, we get a little bit warmer weather. Um, yeah, it's not bad. We still get the four seasons, but you know who uh, Evelyn lives? Evelyn is she still in? Or did she move back to Italy? They used to I live uh, in. Uh, yeah, she was in. She... Uh, She's down at Fort Knox, yeah. Elizabeth Town or something, wasn't it? Yeah, Fort Knox. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They made so a movie about Elizabeth Town, I think. That was a good yeah. story. Yeah, yeah. Elizabeth yeah. Town, Radcliffe. Yeah. yeah. yeah that area, so. That's pretty neat. Yeah. So, I mean, what are you guys going to do after you retire? Are you going to get into modeling or maybe some European, like, house music band? I mean, what's your what's your? <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get into podcast, man. Yeah. <laughs> Paul, we're gonna call no. it Paul casting. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. No, hey. No, I got, I, yeah, I got two kids that are like not even teens yet, so yeah, retirement's not in sight for me. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll probably retire in about uh, a day or two. I'll probably work for another five or six years, and then 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 call it. Uh, that'll probably be about the right age for me. Yeah. Uh, I enjoy what I do. We love Arizona. Arizona's great. So Sean and I love uh, being able to get outdoors here in Arizona. And and, and you, as, as you are in California, it's, it's pretty low humidity until the monsoon. So we're in the monsoon season now. Uh, although we haven't gotten a lot of rain, uh, it's still you can tell the humidity is a little up. Um, but uh, we we enjoy it here. We love it. Um, we have a good quality of life balance, I think, in either place. Oh yeah, either oh, place. Yeah. You're not struggling. Yeah. To make your mortgage like yeah. you would be in some other places yeah we're no. about uh we could see the border from here from, from the house so as the crow flies we're probably about 10 miles from the uh from the mexican border okay so we, we um so we're that far south uh but it's 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 nice it's comfortable it's not uh you know it's not big city we're out in sort of the rural areas tucson's our biggest city that's the nearest airport for us that's yeah, where that's where Claudia lives. She just went to Alaska. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just podcasted Claudia with her. Yeah. She did was you? like telling me those Ratcliffe brothers were so hot. Oh, where, did she? Oh well. no, Ooh. I made that up. <laughs> <laughs> She's happily married. I'm just yeah, way out of turn. No, we met, uh, I'm making we up went notes to, and passing them in yeah. class here. What? You're making <laughs> we, stuff we, up. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. No, we went to dinner with uh, Claudia uh, and Mike, her husband. Uh, nice guy, man. He's a very good guy. I believe uh, it. And sort he of caught up. Great. Yeah, yeah, he is. He's a really neat guy. And uh, so we got, you know, we went to uh, a gem show. They have the uh, world's gem show here in Tucson every year. Uh, and so we went uh, during that particular week and had dinner with them while we were up there with Keiko and her boyfriend, Quinn. Uh, so that was kind of, that was kind of fun. That was kind of fun. So it's, Tucson's probably about 90 miles from where we live. Uh, so it's an hour and a half drive. So it's not that far. No, it's not that uh, long. Yeah. Come on. And no. Drive as fast as you want out there. No, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was driving through uh, Arizona at like 130, like no problem. 
Yeah. You can kilometers. Out, yeah, kilometers. Kilometers. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, but, there's uh, like the pod, podcasting, you guys. I don't know what I'm going to do with all the female fan mail. Um, probably because uh, I'm on here, not because you guys, but. No. Yeah. No, I, I get that. <laughs> I love talking uh -huh. shit. Um, no, they, they got to make it fun. What are we going to be like? So, and then I graduated and I was summa cum laude and uh, I get yeah. a job. I was hired third person on the interview. And I've been working here <laughs> selling insurance for 12 years. Marge and I are happy. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking podcast. Yeah, the want, I'll give you a podcast. <laughs> the Bedford Wives, man. Yeah, you'd be like the Bedford Wives. Yeah. I mean, you get, no, you hey, get back for this, man. So. I know, man. I was going to say, I was just going to say, you, you're doing a great job, man. I, you know, I love yeah. watching the podcast. You do a great job interviewing people. Uh, you know, so keep it up, man. Uh, let me, I, I, let me I see did a it bunch before. Of other I did. Yeah, it no, I got it. Yeah, yeah no, I know. So you know, this yeah, is like yeah. I was doing this with, I was screwing around with the UFC guys, like MMA shit, right. and then I was yeah. doing like ones with military, and I said, you know, I'm gonna go back to my school. I know every character that's my gonna be on the show. Some more right. than others. Some I partied with. Some I didn't. Some I worked at the place and was that watch your basketball game with the women or something. Uh, you know, I've, I've been around a lot of things, so I've got to taste a lot. You know, get to know a lot of people at least a four or five minute interaction with anybody. So there's something, and they knew somebody I knew who might've hung out with me for 10 minutes. And it's kind of like that circuit, right? But we all launched out of Italy. And when you tell people your stories, when you come back, they're like, you're full of shit. You didn't play basketball. <laughs> Get those six, six foot five Italian ladies. Never did that in life. That's for me. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> you know, you don't know Mike Coley. No, <laughs> any great story you will tell from Vicenza. Uh, but you know, it's true. You know, I told people when I joined the Navy, I'm like, yeah, we're at this disco and there's these models from Milano and we're jamming and we're, ah, ah, and they're like, you're full of shit. I'm like, <laughs> what, you think I was supposed to be at home? Well, I'm old enough to join the service now. I've been sitting at my house for 18 years. Yeah. Well, you, you know, I played baseball once. Now I got a story for you. You know, that's that's the thing that I took advantage of Italy and sure. I, I used it as my old playground. I had a great time with it. You know, yeah. and you guys probably did too in your own very quiet, hidden way. You're probably the most radical, radical rat cliffs. You know, the no. wild ones. I don't think so. We're boring. Hey, no, that, that's, Ke that's Keiko. Ke Keiko's sitting there going. You need you know, to interview Keiko. Oh, I'm sure. No, Keiko was fun. I knew Keiko. She'd come to our parties here and there. Keiko's probably yeah, sitting there she going. Was She's probably going that. Those were my two brothers. They both should have been priests. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah. yeah. Very yeah. close. Yeah? yeah. She was the part. She was the. <laughs> <laughs> Not in the cards for me. No, Sorry. Not going to yeah. happen? No. No. no I ain't happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I know. Well, you've had I've five wives the... and. and if you five wives they won't let you enter it's kind of like being too old join the uh, army or whatever yeah it's cool I well get it. it's never too late man well listen man a lot of people didn't have instruction manuals they didn't tell me how to get married who i should marry or nothing and they no, didn't they tell me uh, all the monstrosities i would run along into along the road of experiences i had no idea so it's one, been one big crash them up derby electric ride of fun um I can laugh at it because I'm resilient because I'm like, whatever, you know, I'm not going to have to go back to Vicenza and take some pin off my letter jacket because I'm no longer of a certain status. It's okay. But um, you guys, what podcast did you listen to? Which ones did you, that got you to come on? What gave you uh, the motivation? Who was the guy or gal? Uh, let's see. I watched Derek Gould's. So that was pretty cool. Uh, I like Derek. I went to his wedding as a matter of fact. Oh, speaking of, I went to the wedding with, with uh, Gina Lewis. Uh, so there's a neat story behind that one. So uh, after my parents moved from Frankfurt, they moved to Panama. And uh, so Paul and I and, and my sister had all graduated from high school by then. We were in college. And uh, so we went back to visit my parents in, in Panama. And uh, they had this uh, college, they call it college mixer. And so we went to this college mixer where all the, uh, you know, the college age uh, folks were coming back, all the, you know, children, college age 
and, that, and they were just having a party. And uh, so we were there drinking, and, and uh, I was sitting across from Paul, and I said, uh, I look over, and I go, man, that looks like, uh, that looks like Dina. Hey, Paul, doesn't she look like Dina? And so Paul looks over there and says, no, that looked like Gina. Mm -hmm. You know, Gina and Dina Lewis. The Lewis sisters, yeah. And we both look at each other and go, are we looking at the same person? So we walked over and said, that's Dina and Gina Lewis yeah. that we hadn't seen since we left uh, Vicenza, what, like seven years before that? Something like that. Anyway, so we, we're, we're sitting there going, hey, turn on, kicking it loud enough where, you know, they, they would turn their heads, right? And they would Dina, turn, Dina. So they turned their heads. Yeah, Dina, Dina. And they, they turned their heads and they, and they recognized us. And so we went over there and started partying with them. So that was kind of neat that, you know, yeah. halfway around the world in Panama, we meet up with Gina and Dina at, at, in Panama of all places and yeah. uh, partied, uh, partied with them while we were there That's uh, pretty during cool. the Christmas break. Yeah, it was. It was pretty cool. So we hang out with them, what, a couple of weeks while we were there at Christmas break. Yeah. Uh, while we were in college. So it's kind of neat. Well, I'm just going to send, like, I'm going to, I What's just, that? I sent an email to Ralph Schuberg that uh, Paul Ratcliffe likes to party, bring a keg. Uh, don't oh. worry what his wife says, meet me by the garage. And so it's going out. So he'll be over to your house soon. Don't worry. All right. Little <laughs> radical guy. <man>. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah. As long as it's Coors Light. Yeah. <laughs> Coors Light, man. What's that, man? That's weak, man. <laughs> that's water. What are you talking yeah. about? That's, that's Colorado right. water, man. Yeah, that's that's yeah, some, uh, he's rocky out of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> oh, neither we had a bourbon you. here. We're in Kentucky. We drink a lot of bourbon. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, Ross pretty squared away. He's good. But it's funny because you guys live probably live down the street from each other and don't even know it. Yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> you would know you would know him. we we were there at the same time the whole time. Yeah. Um, but it's funny, like your recollections just go boom. I had some people say, Oh, I don't I don't want to ever talk about Vicenza again. I'm like, what happened to you? What was it? You know? So you never know. But I think most people had a good time from it. I think it brought some good stuff. Yeah, it was a great experience. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, oh yeah. So, it's kind of fun to, you know, like um, watch all these podcasts, you know, just to see what people have been up to, where their lives have taken them, you know, what they look like, you know. Well, you're kind of guessing, like, what would so and so end up being? Yeah, not, Paul not looks I, like, huh? Paul looks like himself, but like 50 more pounds, you know. Husky? <laughs> That's why you only have the headshot, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we want to see all that. Oh, we'll see what you see. What that's you're the truth, with. man. You know that's the truth. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not doing it. Uh, my calves are like this big now. You know? <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> doing a lot of calf blasts. Did you buy some of those shoes? <laughs> Teddy Spittle exercise shoes. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So now I'm uh, Teddy's doing great, man. He's the reason why a lot of this is happening. He's yeah. like, man, you took it over again. I go, I'm just trying to, if I talk about it, like if I called you, you guys want to do a podcast maybe one day? Yeah, I'll talk to my brother. We'll talk to them. Hey, maybe we will. Uh, I just fucking, let's go. Let's go. Yeah, you got to get Ted Marcus on, man. I'm, I'm sure yeah, that'd it. be kind of cool. So. Yeah. Yeah. They always have brothers. So we saw the, I watched the Goldstein ones, the three brothers. Those, that was pretty cool. That uh, was fun. Yeah. They were a little younger than we were, but uh, it was kind yeah. of interesting to kind of see them and, because uh, they used to, uh, they used to be the ball boys for us, weren't they? <laughs> Probably. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I remember. But you know, they're yeah. man, they're they're doing well. I mean, it's just amazing uh, what they've yeah, done. I, I watched the Dina and uh, Stefano one. You yeah, know, that was like, funny. Uh, yeah, they were. They that was uh, pretty good. Yeah, I mean, they, they didn't change much, right? They're still the, the same. <laughs> we gave yeah. poor, we gave poor Dina a hard time. We yeah. treat her like uh, from that show uh, that Dan Aykroyd was in, where he's the he's the detective. It's the Virgin Connie Swale. I don't know. <laughs> I forget the name of that movie. Yeah. Was... She's a sweetheart. No, I don't mean yeah. to be. It's like just because I was naughty doesn't mean you had to be naughty. It's all good, you know. Yeah. Um, right. But it's, we all had fun. But they're fun way. to watch, I man. You're doing a great job. I mean, you know, just a kind of conversation. I mean. Just to get that, not not be too formal, not to take it there. Yeah, I don't yeah. ever prep for this shit, really. You know, I'm uh, like some, gonna... some of us do. You know. Oh yeah, you know, Mr. Some of us kind of. 
I only got a one. You, know? you have a yearbook still? You still get your yearbooks, Paul? I don't like, well, I, I've got them somewhere. I remember, I don't know, I cleaned out the basement. I don't know. Pre-corona or right at, when corona started, you know? Yeah. Like all of us did, we cleaned our houses, right? So we, we did like that exercises. And Sanitizing the old yearbooks. And, yeah. yeah I, you know, I don't know. I haven't. I didn't go back and I couldn't find them. So, you know, well, before this podcast. Well, this is. Uh, I'm, I'm just winging it. <laughs> this is going to be national. I'm broadcasting this globally. So if you throw out a name, I don't remember. I was just going to pretend, you know, just go with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Just nice to have a Wolfman Jack, he worked at SEB. Yeah, I know him. All right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's, a, that's how it works. You guys are like, wow, crazy ass Len get us on this podcast. Now, I, I don't know. I know about people. I have a, there is a story. Where were you? Where did you go? But not so much like a resume, like I'm interviewing for a LinkedIn job or some shit, you know? Right. So how many years do you have of this thing? And I'm going to do a brain teaser on you. How many marbles fit in a walrus's ass? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, sorry. You're not going to be our new, uh, yeah, you're not qualified, man. You know, you can't be our new Python <laughs> programmer. You didn't know that. Sorry. Right now. Now, that's, that's some of the weird stuff people have to deal with now for jobs. Yeah. But, um, yeah, guys, I appreciate you coming on. Um, yeah. This is going to be a good episode, and then uh, maybe we'll get your sister or my brother will interview your sister. Um, oh, that'd be cool. Some of her cronies. There's a lot more coming out. We got Claudia, the one that you you know, Claudia who uh -huh. you met. Um, Terry Poplinski is coming on. Uh -huh. I already already did one with her. She actually had coronavirus while I was interviewing her. And she really? Was doing, yeah, she was doing pretty well though. So oh, she's wow. like, yeah, dealing with it, you know. And who else is coming on? I have a few more. And they're just they're just flying in. Did you guys know Mike Inglesby? Uh huh. Yeah. 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 I was just talking to him, so I'm probably going to okay. do one with him on Tuesday. Nice. Cool. So, nice. I mean, wherever your neighbors were, they're probably coming on. Like Chaz, I hit him up. I haven't heard back from Chaz. Chaz is doing we'll his. We'll encourage thing. others to. You know. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, you guys were neighbors with Chaz, right? Or kind of close by. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah he was in Bellagio, wasn't he? Yeah. 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 If you could only just move back to Villagio, all your problems would be solved. One television oh, yeah. channel, no computers. Uh, uh, stars and Stripes. Yeah. Stars and Stripes and Foodland Food and a pair of top tens, and you'd be just back on top of the planet, man. You yeah. know? That's yeah, just, that'd be fun. I'm, I'm basically, this is Jimmy Buffett, man. I sell escapism, okay? So Jimmy Buffett is <laughs> like, you're, you're up in Chicago and you're freezing your ass off in the winter and you hear wasting away in Margaritaville. It's Margaritaville, yeah. Uh, Cheeseburger in paradise. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've actually, I've eaten at one of those. The burger was pretty good, yeah. Yeah. I've been a couple of his concerts. They're pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were like that. I, it was that oh, or the yeah. Bee Gees. I, I get it out of you. Paul no, I, Jimmy Buffett and uh, James Taylor have been to those. That was pretty fun. Uh, we're going to go to the Eagles. Shelly and I are going to go to the Eagles concert. Got tickets for that. That'll be kind of cool. What's What's interesting is that we're going to fly gone. They got uh, Vince Gill filling in and Glenn Fry's son uh, looks just like Glenn Fry. It's awesome. It'll be awesome. That's pretty cool. A lot of those people yeah. we listen to are getting up there in age. So, you oh, know, right. I saw Motley Crue, shoot, 10 years oh, really? ago. <laughs> yeah. uh, and dude was like, he was overweight trying to belt out some tunes and he didn't have the vocals. Yeah. And oh, the, the band yeah. that was on before them just blew them off the stage. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, just like, like, rock on with that shit. No. But, uh, yeah. It's not everyone's going to be at that level. Some things, you know, where they're more of a talker singer, yeah. probably. <clears throat> but I hope you get in some Christopher Cross concerts or whatever else you're into. <laughs> Air supply. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the best podcast of the year wins a boombox with Air Supply and Christopher Cross. Ride like the wind. England Dan and John Ford Coley. You know, they're classics. Yeah, fog hat. You want to get a fog hat fog. t shirt? Yeah. <laughs> Sarman and Guy Funkel. Uh, Guy Funkel? Sarman, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, those, were the, those were the jams, though. I appreciate yeah. you guys coming on. You guys were yeah. stallions. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Nice to do it. We have yeah. fun, man. This yeah, is fun. fun. Yeah. 